So the official word is the indictment will be coming down tomorrow, but Donald Trump will not be arraigned until next week. We don't know exactly if that means anything. For now, it could just be rumors, but the reporting coming from the Daily Mail is that the indictment is expected tomorrow. And I believe this actually comes from a report, uh, or I should say it additionally comes from a report from, it may have been Business Insider, I'm not entirely sure, but I had seen early reporting that they were still doing some witness testimony and that the final decision will be tomorrow. And the expectation is Donald Trump will be indicted. But who knows? Who knows? The, the more interesting thing about it is that if he is indicted tomorrow, did you guys know that tomorrow's National Donald Day? I'm seeing this uh, sovereign bra on, on Twitter tweeted this, or he retweeted someone else who had tweeted it, that uh, March 22nd is National Donald Day. And there's a whole bunch of other weird things they're posting about March 22nd, 322. And you can Google it and look at all the weird, I don't know, apocalyptic garbage nonsense. But we'll talk about that, that uh, um, because it is interesting. And then we got more information on the banks that uh, are imploding. Because this morning you get First Republic, one of the banks that's, that's expected to collapse. And everyone's cheering, saying, look, it rallied 30 points. And then after market, it dropped 10. So, so it was up 30. And then it went all the way back down 10. So what does that put it at? Minus 40? Yeah. The banks ain't doing too well. So, uh, well, there's that, I guess. But maybe we'll be okay. Maybe everything, everything will be just fine. So before we get started talking about all that, head over to TimCast.com. Go to the menu and click that Join Us button to become a member and support our work directly. We're going to have a members-only live show at about 10, 10 p.m. tonight. You don't want to miss it because we do now have the call-ins set up. So if you want to submit a question and actually call into the after show to hang out with us and ask something of uh, us or our guests, become a member at TimCast and uh, join our Discord where we have we have a system set up where you can submit a question and then we're going to be pulling people into a voice room to talk during the live members only uncensored show. So that, that's going to be really fantastic. So uh, that's a good reason to be a member, right? Also, if you go to trashhouserecords.com, you can pre-order on Amazon the new song we're releasing on Friday, Bright Eyes. And uh, look, the last we, we've, we've released three songs. They've all charted on Billboard. They're clearly very upset with us because Bandcamp deleted our account and the music associated with it. Because I will tell you, look, a lot of people are saying, you know, Tim needs to build more culture. We're starting where we can. We're not the biggest company in the world. So we've, we've done some things. One of those things is, you know, Shane Cashman has a book, Tales from the Inverted World. He has two books now. And then we have music that we've put out. And uh, I, I suppose it's so threatening that despite the fact that none of the music in any way is political, or I should say the song Genocide was only peripherally uh, political. We don't directly address anyone by name or anything. They deleted our account. So clearly whatever we're doing there is working. And they're very threatened that all of our songs have hit Billboard. So that's why we're doing pre-orders right now, because if we do even better, I would like to, well, maybe y'all would like to rub it in the faces of those who are trying to tear us down because they don't want us to have an impact on culture. So this song is coming out on the 24th. We then have a week to try and get as many sales and downloads as possible so we can once again hit Billboard. Apparently it's working. So I really do appreciate all of your support. That's TrashHouseRecords.com. But don't forget to also smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about all of this and a whole lot more is Rep. Troy Nails. Good afternoon, Tim. Everything is well. Bright eyes. I need to know who wrote it. I did. You did? Yeah. Right. Give, me, give me a line or two out of it. Uh... Uh, I well, people have to pre-order it. I don't okay, know. We'll, all right. Maybe, maybe, I don't we'll, know. maybe we'll play a. We, we have a video with a. I'll, okay, I'll play yeah. this. Is it is the sound gonna play? I guess. Oh, the audio's not set up. There you go. Can you hear it? Yeah. All right, there you go. Beautiful. Coming out Friday. Hannah, is sure. that you in the background doing the who? Absolutely not. If it, I was it, singing, everyone would go deaf, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I, yeah, I wanna, think that's Carter. I want to thank you for having me back. I enjoyed my time here. Oh, yeah, last absolutely. Time. It's good to be back here. And it, so much to talk about, Tim. So yeah. many things going yes, on. Yes, where's, where's, that, where's that book at? Did you? Oh, oh uh, so yeah. uh, you're a member of Congress, and you have a book called The Big Fraud, and there's a picture of you in the, in the Capitol building on January 6th. I think it's uh, uh, perfect timing, actually, with... 
the potential indictment, I guess, is something that's going to happen, but you here with your book talking about, well, the, the fraud. <laughs> yeah, the last time I was on your show, we were talking about it. It, it wasn't released yet, but Donald Trump has, has endorsed the book. It's a big fraud. Two of the 10 chapters in here are about January 6th. That is me on the cover as the last member to leave the House full on January 6th. And I know a little bit about January 6th because uh, Speaker McCarthy, now Speaker McCarthy, asked me to be one of the five to be on that select committee that Nancy Pelosi rejected. So I have a little information about January 6th. I have a law enforcement background, 30 years, a sheriff of Fort Bend County, Texas for eight, and it was a law enforcement failure. So, And if you listened to Tucker the other day about those 14,000 hours, that January 40. 6th stuff. 40. Well, he had he was reviewing thousands of hours, but I'll tell you what, it, 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 Tucker was right on target, and it's almost like he read my book. It's almost like you read my book. I bet, I bet he did. Yes, yeah. sir. He seems like well, a book reader. Huh? Yeah, the big fraud. Get on Amazon. Went to number one uh, under elections uh, there for a while on Amazon. So wow. it's doing very, very well, and, and the Donald, he supports it. And right on. Well, this, 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 we have a lot to talk about as it pertains to yes, the, the going after the president and the fraud. So uh, thanks for joining us. Should be good. We also have Hannah Claire hanging out. Hi, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for TimCast.com. And we got Phil Labonte. Ian is off tonight. Hello, I am Phil Labonte, the lead singer of All That Remains, anti-communist and counter-revolutionary. What's up, Serge? That's a lot of things. That's yep. a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I am at Serge.com. Ready to do this? Let's go. Let's jump into that first story. We got this from the Daily Mail. Exclusive. Trump will not be arraigned this week. Former president is expected to be indicted tomorrow. And Secret Service will make plans for his surrender and appearance in New York court next week. A source familiar with the proceedings exclusively told DailyMail.com on Tuesday there will be no arraignment this week. He's expected to be indicted Wednesday, after which the DA's office will reach out to his Secret Service detail to make arrangements for his surrender. All 36,000 NYPD officers are in uniform and on notice for deployment after Trump called for his supporters to protest his imminent indictment. Now, the question is, will there be a perp walk? If that question is for me, I will tell you that Alvin Bragg, he's the Manhattan DA going after Trump. He doesn't like Trump. It's quite clear. He despises the man. He's trying to damage the, the former president. I think maybe uh, this Mr. Uh, Alvin Bragg wants to be the governor maybe one day, but he's going after Trump. Uh, I think it's going to backfire. The perp walk wouldn't surprise me. I think they're going to have to figure out how that's going to work uh, with the Secret Service. Uh, I ran a county jail, a big jail. Uh, you can't just get Donald Trump and put him in a holding cell and general population. You ain't going to do any of that. I believe that there will be a booking photo, though. I believe that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. To place the, uh, the president of the United States, former president, in handcuffs, you just don't do it, especially for a, a, a misdemeanor crime like this, which is going through an indictment. I, I can't figure that one out, but it's, it's not a, well, a, you a violent crime, Tim. It's you not a violent crime. It. That's right. I got a book on it. So, no, I it's think he's going to do it. It's all about Donald Trump for 2024. That's what this is. It's about 2024, keeping him off the ballot or trying to. This has never happened before, a former president being arrested. So, so what? They, they, they book him, and as they're bringing him in, the Secret Service is with him the whole time. Whole time. He's in the, the temporary holding cell awaiting processing, and he's got two Secret Service guys with him. Then they bring him to gen general population at the county or, or local jail. or it's, it's Manhattan, so I think that's on, um, what street is that on? I can't remember what street. But it's uh, uh, lower uh, lower Manhattan. So he's going to be inside there in the cell with a bunch of other guys. And the Secret Service guards are going to be standing in front of him in the jail with him. There's just no way. There's no logistical way that that would happen. I mean, are they also going to inspect the Secret Service members and put them in handcuffs? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. I and imagine. then the cameras stop working and the guards fall asleep. <laughs> I imagine the Secret Service is not going to surrender their sidearms. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine that the president will be... As my, I mean, he's he's the former president. You know, the, the the same protocol is going to apply for him going to be booked uh, as for anything else. I think that it's pretty clear that this isn't he w he's not going to go to jail for this. Like, I, I don't imagine that it's it, that this is even a jailable offense. It's like a five hundred dollar fine. Yeah. So this is this is all just. And it's and, and here, here, politics. here's the crazy thing the, the the charge is basically bad bookkeeping. So here, here's what, here's what here's what happens. They're saying that the money he paid to Stormy Daniels was because uh, he was paying her off, and then he listed it as legal fees, and that's a crime. So he's going to get charged or whatever. It's like when 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 you're filing your taxes or whatever you're doing your accounting. If you mislabel something, do you know what happens? They call you up on the phone 
or they show up and knock on your door or you get a letter. Typically, you get a letter. I don't think they call you at all. Yeah. You'll get a letter and it'll say, we believe this was an error. You owe us X dollars. And then you respond with, okay, that, that's it. Yeah. Well, the DOJ, uh, they declined uh, to prosecute Trump on this deal with, with Stormy. So I think they went after Michael Cohen, obviously, uh, Trump's attorney back then. So Michael Cohen obviously got three years in prison related to things with, with Russia collusion and stuff. So, no, uh, I, I will say this. Uh, Donald Trump is going to drive into this sally port. He's going to go into a processing room. They probably are going to fingerprint him, but they're not going to wipe it on his hands. It's all done electronically. He'll never reach a jail cell. They'll take a picture of him, and he'll be out the door within 45 minutes. It'll be the best thing for him. I think Trump, uh, if Trump was smart, I'm imagining that right now with his campaign staff, he's saying, please, everybody, your thoughts and prayers that they arrest me tomorrow or next week. Please, please, everybody, cross your fingers, send your thoughts and prayers that I do get arrested. It's going to be the biggest thing for, for Trump supporters. It's going to pull the, it's going to take the wind out of the sails of the left. Yay, you did it. Trump's been arrested. Have a nice day. It's done. It's over. And for everyone, everyone who supports Trump, or even people in the middle, it's going to be, hey, look, they're trying to arrest their political rival, or they're trying to use the, the weight of criminal law enforcement to stop their principal political rival. I don't see how, any, how you could characterize it in any other way. It's an obvious political stunt. It's, it's an attempt yeah. for the Democratic Party, the Democrats, to go after Donald Trump. Yeah. All it's going to do is show middle American voters who support a Trump that if, if Trump can be arrested, then the Democrats can bring the weight of law against you, right? It reminds people how vulnerable they are, especially if they're in counties where the DA or you know any part of uh, the judicial, judicial system is left and has been elected. I mean, it shows you that they are not willing to draw, like, if, if they aren't willing to draw the line at the former president, what would stop them from persecuting you? Yeah, they, the answer is nothing. They, I don't think that there's, I don't think that this is, is a, a situation where Trump is going to be, it's not going to make your average middle of the road uh, voter more sympathetic to, to Trump. Uh, it's definitely going to galvanize the base. It might get some people on the edges, but I don't see how it's going to change a lot of people's minds. It, it, it's, it's going to have a positive impact for Donald Trump on independent uh, independent voters. Okay, so what there, there's an article in Politico and it's like don't overthink it, an arrest for Trump is bad. And I'm just like these people are so stupid. They are the stupidest people ever in corporate press, the Democratic Party. They don't know that there's no such thing as bad press. Trump capitalized on bad press in 2015 and 16 to get elected. The media wouldn't shut up about him. Everything was negative and he won. They seem to think that it, it, this political article said he will not earn a single new voter. And that's the most, that's the stupidest thing possible. Yeah. He's not going to lose a single voter. And the worst case scenario is he doesn't get any voters. But the likely scenario is someone will see Trump on the TV again and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to vote for Trump. So yeah. I'm on TV. Mm -hmm. Don't even know what happened. Derp. I don't think he, I don't think he loses. I don't think he loses a single vote over this. Not, no, no, no. But he's going to gain votes. Yeah. This is what people don't get. These, these, these Democrats... We, we had the Krasensteins on, the, these liberal pundits, God. and they said they thought the economy was pretty good or, or, or good. And I'm like, that makes sense. If you look at the polling, liberals think the economy is good. It's the, it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. By no objective standard is the economy doing well, but they think it is. Okay, that's the same thing with Trump being arrested. Regular people who don't care all that much are seeing this and going, just stop already. Man, I'm going to vote for the guy to spite now because people won't shut the up. Well, nobody knew who Alvin Bragg was until this story came out. So his name has probably been used and talked about more in the last 24 hours than anybody in America. I didn't, so I, and I, I'm, I, I'm fairly well yeah, versed yeah. on who's who in politics. So now. he's going to be the guy that says, I was the one to accomplish this. Many, many people have wanted to see Donald Trump in either handcuffs or arrested because they feel he's a criminal. He's the one able to get it done. He'll be looked at a hero with the far left nut jobs and everybody over there. And uh, I, I think it's shameful. I think it's abuse of office. I just saw a little tweet or something that uh, Rand Paul put out there said, we ought to be arresting Alvin Bragg. Uh, for abusing his office and abusing his power. But I think this helps Donald Trump. This is a two-way race between he and DeSantis. And quite honestly, DeSantis' comments the other day when he had an opportunity to speak about it, he failed miserably. Agreed. Yeah, we talked about it. I like that he called out the Soros DA and said they're bad. But then he just said, eh, I'm not getting involved. When he should have said, 
you dare not step one foot on Floridian soil to try and take Donald Trump. He will not be extradited and we will use force to stop you. That's what he should have said. Mm-hmm. And we mentioned the other day, it, Carrie Lake would have said it or something to that effect. That, I don't see why he didn't say it, right? Like, I know that he wants to like, be president. Yeah, but even then, if he really thinks he has a chance to face off against Trump, that would have potentially yeah. won the hearts of Trump's base, right? Saying like, yeah, I'm g- we're going to defend Trump. Like, what's happening is an abuse of power would have benefited him if he was serious about trying to run soft. I don't think anyone really thinks DeSantis is going to beat Trump. Everyone's just so scared. And Mm -hmm. that's what I I said the other day. I'm just so pissed off. Everyone is so scared, sitting there cowering, worried about what's going to happen. And it's like the only reason the bad things are happening is because good men do nothing. That's it. So DeSantis, he gets like a a C minus. You know, it was a C minus statement. Ah, yeah, he called out Soros DAs. They're garbage. You know, Soros is a bad dude. He's putting in people who are letting criminals go. It's like villains from DC comic books. But he really didn't make a strong statement on, on defending Trump. Uh, Hannah, I think that uh, uh, Donald Trump is in DeSantis's head every day. He's mm-hmm. living in his head. Uh, I felt that his comments are irresponsible. Uh, number one, he never mentioned Trump once in his, what, 90 seconds. What he did make very clear is most of the American people probably have no clue or would have any clue why Donald Trump was indicted by this Manhattan DA. But DeSantis made it very clear. What did he say? And I said, shame on him for saying it. He said, you know, I don't know, you know, how how this this porn star stuff and hush money works. That's what he said. And that was a low jab. And when, when you think about Ron DeSantis, you know, when Trump was kind of attacking him for the past several months, is, and, and then DeSantis says, I'm going to stay above the fray. I'm not going to, I got a, a state to run. I'm not going to get in the name calling this and that. He just violated what he said he, wouldn't, he mm-hmm. would never do. And, and shame on him. It's, it's, he's done. He's done. DeSantis is done. And he accidentally, I hope accidentally, said, I'm happy I'm the only one who removed a Soros DA. And I'm like, you're happy you're the only one? Shouldn't you be saying, I'm, I'm upset I'm the only one who did it? Like, we should be Why hoping, am I the only one? Yes, not being glad you're the only one who's doing it. Uh, yeah, this was a, was, a, was a big net negative, in my opinion, for DeSantis. He had, he had a strong opportunity to, uh, be, t- to take the lead. He didn't take it. I think, I think his, whether it's the Paul Ryans and the others that are around him giving him a bad advice. But listen, obviously, he's a great governor. He's done a great job in Florida. I think he has a bright future. He's, he, he, he has to run in 2024 because he could lose his shine by 2028. So he really doesn't have much of a choice, but he's got one guy in the way, and that's the leader of our party, and that's I, Donald Day Trump. He needs to apologize to Trump, call Trump up and say, I'm sorry. Don't jump in the race because he hasn't announced yet. Say, Donald Trump, I'd love to be your running mate. Let's go out there and save this great country from the radical left, and DeSantis could be the president in 2028. I, wanna, I, I agree. Uh, I, I, we've got a story about this, but I want to hold off for a little bit because I want to uh, just stay on the, 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 Trump, uh, the Trump train for the moment because we have this tweet here that I want y'all to see so we can talk about. This is from Debate Society of Berkeley. AI is getting out of hand. Y'all got me excited for nothing. And there are several photos AI generated of Trump being arrested, and they're pretty good. So the first one we're showing is just a bunch of NYPD cops holding Trump who looks panicked. The next one is Trump apparently resisting arrest as a bunch of cops stand around him and try to lock him up. The next one is that, this this is really funny, this is my favorite one, Trump running, panicked, as some cops aren't even looking at him and are running apparently the other direction, so okay. And then the last one is Trump once again resisting arrest as cops are, you know, yelling and pinning him down. And this cop here, he's got a a strange little hand, you can't really see it. But uh, the reason why I think this is significant, we talked about it before with the AI stuff. People started making fake posts and, uh, and, and deep fakes that Trump had already been indicted, that Trump was being arrested, and then they make photos like this. I saw a bunch of these going around. People were like, you know, Trump surrenders, and some weren't as crazy as this. But these photos, they're going to be hard to tell if they're real at, at a glance. Mm-hmm. So what happens in 5,200 years when some kid is looking through the archives and he sees photos and he's like, I don't know which one's the real one. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's very I mean, history is being erased. I mean, we yeah. just said that it's unlikely that we'll get this big cuffing moment of Trump, but they don't need it if they can just fake it, right? If the idea is that the me- the media, which is dominantly left wing in this country, wants a picture of Trump in handcuffs, all they need to do is 
you know, run one on the evening news that's been AI generated and then issue an apology the next day. It's already too late at that point. They've exposed this fake photo. What happens if someone, someone right now who's, I say, 60 years old, they're not on Twitter, they're not on the internet, they have no idea, and they turn on the, the Tucker Carlson, they turn on the Fox News, and they're sitting there, and Tucker's like, it's all an outrage. None of this is real. And he's like, yeah, you tell him, Tucker. And then he goes to the bar where he meets up with his friends, and his friend's like, he puts his glass on and says, let me, let me show you this picture. And then he holds it up for everybody, and they see a, a photograph of Trump being arrested, and they go, no, what is this? That Wow. And they believe it because they don't know what's going on. This, my point is, there are probably a lot of people who genuinely believe Trump was arrested, and these photos may be real. I think it's like the fulfillment of a fantasy for a lot of people. Like, they'll believe the photos, even when you can tell that these are sort of not right. The lighting's not right. That one guy's got a bizarre hand. But it's the fulfillment of this thing that they've been rapidly jonesing for, for what, four plus years at this point? They want Trump in handcuffs so badly that they are willing to believe uh, a completely fake photo. I, I, I hope they arrest him. All those cops are the same cop. If you look at that picture, they're all the same guy. No, that's... The cop, that's that one? They, that's what they look like. They really, really look Bro. similar. And yeah. You're just uh, racially profiling uh, New York City right. cops you right now? Are. I, I see that photo and I'm like, that looks like every protest I've ever been to. Yeah. <laughs> but what I, what I was saying a moment ago is I, I do hope Trump gets arrested. I really, really hope he does. I hope I hope they go down to Florida, a bunch of, a bunch of cops surround his house, and they knock on his door, they get a warrant, Trump answers, and they say, Mr. Mr. President, you're under arrest. I hope it happens. So the facade of our democracy can finally be over. Because I tweeted that, and you get all these lefties laughing and being like, dude, and I'm like, okay, listen. When Barack Obama can murder a 16-year-old American citizen without charge or trial and get nothing, nothing, not so much as a bad word could be said about him by any of you people, then you want to arrest Donald Trump because he, he asked... He said, I'll give you some money if you claim that we didn't bang. Like, that's the crime of the century for which you are going to go and arrest. So I'm kidding about going to assess and actually arresting him. But I hope the arrest happens. I hope he shows up and they say, ha we got him now. Because then we can stop pretending like these people are anything other than psychopaths who are trying to steal power. A couple years ago when Steve Bannon uh, turned himself in to the FBI because of whatever charges they're bringing against him, he, I mean, it was kind of a... It wasn't the most uh, monumentous moment, but I do remember it being sort of powerful watching him say, like, I'm going to do this. Like, we've got to keep fighting, whatever else going in. And then, like, obviously the legal battle continues, but it does have this moment where you feel like, OK, we've got to move forward. Like it had it had weight behind it. In some ways, I feel like Trump, you know, showing up wherever, being like, I'm going to turn myself in. I'm surrendering to custody because, like, we cannot keep going this way and this is uh, an abuse of power like it will give him a platform in this very powerful moment that yes obviously i wish they wouldn't arrest him but on the other hand like i don't think they follow anything logical they're not bound by the ethics that i think most americans are bound by and so we might as well make the most of this thing like that's why i was glad that he announced like yes they're going to arrest me like i'm telling you right now it's about to happen like this is what our democracy has come to it's sort of powerful it's it's political theater in a way that i wish we didn't have it on the other hand i'm glad he's taking advantage of it yeah i mean i guess it's a good thing that he's he's going to uh, well i mean it it seems obvious that if he's going to be ar arrested that he should capitalize on it mm -hmm. i mean if they're going to make these moves he should do you know obviously should do whatever he can he shouldn't let them set the narrative yeah he it. should he should he should definitely do whatever he can to set the narrative and having pictures of himself in handcuffs or having his mug shot as a campaign ad uh, as the first president that's ever been arrested by the opposing party when the opposing party is in power you know like and the i, I think that it's powerful i think that it will matter to to obviously to MAGA people and we'll get, a fi get them fired up. And that could make a difference in the polls, but it's still a long way away and we don't know who else is, is going to be running and stuff. So I don't, I don't know that this matters in 2024. It'll matter today and for the next, you know, the news cycle, probably yeah. for a couple, maybe a week or two. But do you feel like the left's turning Trump into a martyr with this action? Well, that's exactly what's happening. They've been, the left is, they've been going after Trump now for decades. It's just not as in the last four or six years, Russia collusion, all that's the impeachment, everything. They're, they're concerned about Donald Trump. And you, you have to ask yourself, you know, if Donald Trump truly lost the 2020 election, why are they going after him now, right? Why, I mean, if he truly lost the election, why are they going after him? You would think 
7 million votes, right? 2020, what did he lose by? 7 million, 71 million to 64. I think it was like 10 or something. Uh, okay, S 11 million. Or maybe, okay. maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it was like 7 or 8. Okay, but the point is he lost by several million. He lost the electors by 60 or 70. You would think you'd want the same guy coming back in four years. Why don't they want that man coming back? Why do they because feel they have to paint him as, a, as, as like a criminal, that this guy's got to be put in jail, put in handcuffs? Because they people, are so afraid of him. They're because people him. saw Joe Biden. You could only get away with a Joe Biden one time, and they know it. <laughs> well, do you think Joe Biden's coming? Is he the nominee? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. I mean, what are they going to do? Who are they going to get? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe Michelle wants to jump in there, but I'll tell you something. <laughs> I'm sending Joe Biden 25 bucks. I want, <laughs> I want Joe Biden to be the nominee so bad. I hope that's who they have. They have a short bench. I got it. Very, very limited. I don't bench. Even think it's a bench. It's like a chair. Well, I want him to be the nominee Wheelchair. so bad because Donald Trump's going to be the nominee. He'll be the 47th president. I agree. Yeah. The, um, when you had that year, the, a, a year is an eternity in politics. And it doesn't matter what Trump did in 17, 18, and 19. All that matters is that last year was COVID. And there was no sports, there was no movies, everybody was pissed off, and they said in the media and across the board, Trump did it. Joe Biden hid in his basement, and people went out, and, and, and you have to look at the enthusiasm levels. Enthusiasm for Biden was, was, was nil, but enthusiasm, enthusiasm against Trump was almost as high or higher than enthusiasm, enthusiasm for Trump among his base. Here's the thing. We now have a Joe Biden. The economy is in shambles. We're nearing World War III. All of the things Trump said that were going to happen have happened or are happening or are about to happen. And regular people are wondering why it costs six bucks for a, a dozen eggs. So you can't run the guy again mm -hmm. because all of these problems that have been going on for years, people ain't happy about. Yeah. Do you think they're, you think they're, they're going to run someone else? I'm saying they're going after Trump desperately because they don't have a candidate. Because who are they going to run? Kamala? Nope. No. No. Like, Everything. there's no obvious alternative. I mean, Joe Biden was supposed to be the end of the old guard, welcoming in this new era, and, you know, no one Ron likes Ron DeSantis. Harris. They'll run him. The <laughs> That's their best bet. I bet they would. <laughs> That's the only Do thing they got. Do you think they would have Ron DeSantis if they wanted Basically. to beat Trump enough? I, I mean, obviously. They, ju they just give up, and they're like, well, the only person who can beat Trump they is DeSantis. They, like, nominate Joe Manchin because he's a Democrat, but, like, yeah. he's the best that they can do. I mean, to, yeah. If they were smart, that's what they do. But, again, they nah. set this precedent of... Uh, we are ending the old party Democrat, right? Like Pelosi's gone. Joe Biden, I think, is supposed to be the last AOC. like old white president, and they never successfully cultivated a, a, a someone to take over for him. And he doesn't want to leave office. I mean, the reason Joe Biden hasn't announced is not because he doesn't want to run; it's because the party doesn't want him to. Can you imagine how amazing it would be if they choose Ocasio Cortez? Oh, Just to God. see the AOC Trump debates. Ah. Uh. Don't don't tease like me I like that. Don't tease. That would be. I'm just, not going to comment. I'll see her tomorrow. <laughs> uh, it would be just beautiful. I'm not would, saying anything negative. I'm saying it would be a sight to I, behold. Do you find I, you have to do that? Hey, look, more more I, people I, are so talking about Michelle Obama uh, today. No, uh, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's, Michelle Obama could. She could be one of those. That she's going to do it for the good of the country, so to speak. She'll be one of those that says, "I really don't want to, and my husband doesn't want me to, but I have to for the good of the country." You could see her jump in that. That would be a little scary because I'm, I'm concerned about the electorate and, and how they vote. But we did get some hope, though, a couple weeks ago, did we not? With with the crime that we're seeing across our country, getting rid of that nut job in Chicago, that Lightfoot. Oh, I yeah. Mean, was she see not the just horrible? You see the reporter say. Get the hell out of this city. Uh, no. So maybe people are maybe people in the cities, in these inner cities, minority groups and others are saying, you know what? Uh, our, our children matter too. Crime matters in inner cities. And no, no. we've got a mayor that is just You know, the the, scare, the the thing about Chicago is it was all based on race. So if you look at the election map and overlay it with the the racial neighborhoods demographics map, it's it's the the top the person who won the neighborhood was the race of the people who lived in the neighborhood. That was probably the, the, in my view, the dominant factor. Lori Lightfoot won uh, uh, in, in almost every black neighborhood. And then, uh, what was it, Vallis? Was that the guy? White dude won all the white neighborhoods. And then the Hispanic dude won in the Hispanic neighborhoods. And then in the college areas, there was a woke uh, black man who won, which is unsurprising for woke people. But it was almost entirely based on race. So I think what ends up happening is white voters mobilized due to the crime in their areas and then voted based on not necessarily race, but 
principally, I, 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 I should say principally, but predominantly. And I, the reason I say not entirely is because the woke white people voted for, for a black man, but it was shocking to see the racial breakdowns there. Yeah. I mean, Laura Lightfoot said that she lost because she's a black woman in America. So she thinks it's about race. Let me, let me, let me, I, I, I want to pull this up. just because she looks like a bass. Take a look at this. It's been a rough, rough for her. This is the most insane thing I have ever seen, will see, and it will never end. This is a civics poll showing the national economy's current condition. Right now, this polling represents how Democrats feel about the economy. Did I say national election? National, national economy, current condition. 49% of Democratic voters believe the economy is fairly good. Fairly good. Only 37 think it's bad. 26 say fairly bad. 11 say very bad. 7 are unsure. And 7 think it's very good. 7% of Democrats think the economy is very good. Okay, well, fine. It's low, right? But how could anyone think the economy right now is in any way good? These people... They're in a cult. They are zombies. There's no way you go to the grocery store and there's no eggs and there's no milk and you're like, everything's great. It's the what? kind of poll I wish that they did some follow-up questions on. Like, what markers are you using to say it's fairly good? Well, take a look at this. Republicans, you've got only 4% of Republicans saying fairly good. Less than a percent say very good. 68% say very bad. And they are objectively correct. That a, a carton of eggs is six bucks. In some places, it's four, four eighty up to six bucks. That is objectively bad. Now, here's the best part: you look at independent voters; they mostly agree with Republicans that it's very bad or fairly bad. But about twenty-one percent of independents think it's fairly good. That's because around twenty-one percent of independents probably lean Democrat. But my point with this is: consistently, we see the voter base that Republicans need to win side with Republicans in their worldview. And that's good news. The bad news is Democrats are deranged completely, and I don't know how you save them from themselves. There's a significant portion of the population that refuse to acknowledge reality because they hate the reality that that's going on around them. They don't they don't want Joe Biden to be a bad president, and so they're they refuse to acknowledge the things that Joe Biden has done that were bad policy. And this isn't anything about Joe Biden as a there the, none of this is personal attack. This is it would be the same no matter who the Democrat candidate is because it's Democrat policy. It's policies that the Democrats and the left want. Joe Biden is a rubber stamp. The man is empty as it gets because he's he's barely awake when he's doing things at work uh so this is it's it's just that the the left does not want to admit that the policies are not working you can't have da's release criminals after they've been arrested and expect them to not continue to commit crime you cannot endlessly print money and expect there to be no inflation these things are not in the control under the control of human beings like no government has ever been able to control these types of things it's ridiculous you know, I'm concerned a little bit about the electorate. You know, Tim, you mentioned about the independents, and we thought the independents were going to do very well for us here in, in the midterms here. And, and, you know, we only won the House by what? We got a five-seat majority. We thought we were going to do much, much better. But I think— That's because of I, ballot harvesting. Yeah. I think that the American people I, I maybe have short memories. I don't know if it's the ill-informed, the uninformed voter, this and that, but— when, when you look at our, our economy today, whether it's the inflation, the fuel prices, what's happening globally with Ukraine and, and, and all the other stuff, China uh, and, and crime, the southern border, under Donald Trump, we didn't have these issues. Troy, not, we have a crisis on every corner in America today. Troy, not, not for nothing, but the, the, the Republicans are the Republicans' responsibility. It's their responsibility to get elected. The realities on the ground have to be brought to the population in a way that they can understand and see it that motivates them to get to the polls to vote. And they ha the Republicans are responsible for doing that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, you're right about everything. All the, the, it, it's... The, it's it's not bring, getting them to the polls. It's bringing the polls to them. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. The, fair the, enough. The, this is, look, you uh, you guys use WinRed. WinRed is the online fundraising system that Republicans use. And how, how many years did it take for Republicans to figure that out? Democrats had Act Blue up for like, I think, three years before Republicans finally figured out how to take online donations. 
So Democrats are consistently ahead of Republicans in figuring out how to game the system to win better. They did it with Obama and social media. They did it with Win uh, with uh, with uh, uh, Act Blue, and then you know Republicans were late with Win Red, and now you have ballot harvesting and all the rule changes that were implemented. And the best the Republicans would muster up was you shouldn't be doing that while the Democrats did it and then did it again. So they they win through universal mail in voting and ballot harvesting. Then 2022 comes around and they double down and do it more. And the best we got from Republicans both times was, ooh, I'm wagging my finger at you for doing that. What should have happened is as, as soon as 2020 was over, there should have been an assessment where they were like, how did here's the problem. So many of Trump supporters believed there's there's no way Biden could get these votes. It's impossible. Therefore, it must be fraud. And I'm sitting here like, or they created universal mail in voting. They sent the ballots to people's homes. Everybody was talking about it. And instead of people realizing that if you knock on someone's door and say, hey, that's that thing right there, fill that out. I'll take it from you. And if you don't, I'll be back tomorrow. Instead of believing that's how easy it was, they believed that China was sending in fake ballots, that people were duplicating it. Now, I'm sure there are probably instances of people like a mom gets like three ballots and then she fills them out for her kids because there was that lady on the, was it on The View? She claimed to have done that. She's like, I voted for my son. And it was like, a, like nobody cared and she's not going to go to jail or anything like that. But the reality was, you, it's easy to mobilize activists in cities. You go to one building in Manhattan and you can knock on enough doors to talk to 1,000 people by the end of the day. But a rural area, you cannot do that. And so not only were Republicans not focused on ballot collection, harvesting and chasing, but they didn't even realize that before this ground game in cities is easier. So moving into 2024, I think that's why I think Trump said this. We're going to become a ballot harvesting powerhouse. And all Republicans are now realizing like, oh, wait, maybe that's why we lost. The example is Orange County, California, traditionally Republican. One day, all of a sudden votes Democrat. And everyone's like, what? How did that happen? The Republican Party down there says, hey, they're doing ballot harvesting. The next election, the Republicans won. So I think the, the mood of the nation is correct. Regular people, independent voters, conservatives, libertarians, the freedom faction, whatever you call it, people who aren't in the woke cult know it's bad and are pissed off and they would prefer a Donald Trump or at least not a Biden. But with ballot harvesting, you got people who are in their apartment sitting there playing video games, not comes on their door and they're like, look, man, I don't know anything about that politics stuff. And they'll go, well, why don't you fill out that? Fill, fill that out right there. It's like, all right, what do I do? I just sign it. There you go, man. Have a good day. That works. So if Republicans get on that, it's going to go back to normal. It's infuriating that that's, that's legal. But if that's what we have to do, that's, that's what you have it's to do. 26 states, I think it's legal. Yeah. Some Unreal. states have specific um, restrictions on how you do it. Unbelievable. But in, I think there's like 13 states where you can just knock on doors and take ballots. And, and people were like shocked to find that in some swing states, you can go to a nursing home with a ballot for every person or go to the nursing home, ask the nursing home staff to collect all the mail-in ballots that were delivered there. Then have all the elderly people come into the room and say, I'm going to I'm going to deliver your votes for you. So why don't you all fill it out and sign, put my name on it. I'll sign it. And then I'm allowed to drop your votes off for you. And all these old people go, thank you for visiting. People don't get it. It's that easy. So Republicans got to get on that game and then they'll win. So do you think Republicans are ready for that going into 2024? I mean, have a Republican voters? Scott Pressler is out there working his fingers to the bone. And they disrespect this guy. They need to put him in charge of like the RNC's outreach or whatever. Get him on, on, on this program. He'll take care of it for all of you guys. Is that what the issue was with Kerry Lake? I don't know if that was the issue with Kerry Lake. I think Kerry Lake was saying that a lot of these polling locations that, that were mostly uh, in areas where it was strongly conservative, Republican, you know, had issues either with the with the voting machines or they were running out of paper, the, or had the, issues with the ballots. So I yeah. think it's a multifaceted, it's it's all sorts of issues. The Democrats have been better at it. I think the Democrats have become very good at cheating. And what's, that's what they do. They cheat. Um, I'm not saying that we got to get better at cheating, but we have to get some integrity back into our electoral process, our process of, of, of elections. And I, I think we, it would be very simple. We should just have one day. There's no reason we need to have two, three weeks. I agree. We should have one day of voting. You know, and as Afghanistan, you put the little, uh, you put the uh, little ink on the finger and you put it on the ballot. You know, it stayed there for three days. We know if you voted before, you know, you can't yep. bring a different finger back. And I just think we got to cut it down to one day and, and, and paper ballots. 
Get rid of the machines, paper ballots, one day, make it a national holiday. Yeah, Agreed. France holiday. can do it. These other countries do it. What was it like France? They have like a, a glass box and you walk up and put it in. There's people watching from different parties and they watch it all happen. It's that simple. Yeah. But uh, I agree with you. The Democrats are very, very good at cheating and Republicans suck at it. But let's define what cheating is. They go to the state legislatures and they change the rules to favor themselves. They implement universal mail-in voting to favor themselves. All of these things were done through a legal process. Now, in many instances, these processes were challenged and their allies in the court said, no, everything's fine. Uh, Pennsylvania being the best example. Texas sued Pennsylvania. I think 48 states were involved. It was insane. And a lower court ruled that actually universal mail-in voting was unconstitutional and the Republicans would likely win on the merits. But the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania is mostly Democrat. And they said, actually, no, despite the fact the Constitution doesn't allow this, we are going to. So you can call it cheating or you can call it something like procedural manipulation. I think it was it was really done. Uh, uh, what cost Donald Trump the election 2020 was covid. It was COVID. It was the uh, the the emergency declaration. Uh, Governor Evers up in the state of Wisconsin, a good example. He created the safer at home policy where everybody pretty much just got a ballot, every universal ballot, pretty yep. much. One point three million ballots were returned in the state of Wisconsin. One point three million, and and they didn't even they didn't reject uh, three thousand of them. I think twenty nine hundred and change. There was so much fraud in the state of Wisconsin, and he did it under this under the, the, the executive order that was there at the national level. So he made a decision on his own. And they bypassed the state laws, the state legislatures and the election laws, because you had this emergency declaration. But, but, but look, this is the issue. This is why I think Republicans, lose. it's not fraud. They're, they're manipulating the system. They're gaming the system. They had a process by which they implement this procedure through the system. In Pennsylvania, the Republicans agreed with Democrats on universal mail-in voting. And this is what the lawsuit was partly about, that in order to implement universal mail-in voting, you have to have an amendment to the Constitution, which requires printing it in newspapers and getting a vote, putting it on the ballot in November, and then waiting till afterwards. And established Republicans and Democrats worked together through the traditional legislative process and passed a law allowing them to do it. The problem then is, a lot of people come out and they scream fraud. And it's like, this is this, what they're doing is they're dangling keys to your left and then smacking you with their right hand. If you if you approach this from the perspective that there's some kind of illegal activity or malfeasance, you've lost because they won in the courts. They have their allies in the courts defending them as they use the process to win. It's just like what I was saying with Act Blue and Win Red. Democrats launched an online donation system. BLM, I think, went through Act Blue, which allowed some of the donations for BLM. I could be wrong. It's been a while since we covered this to funnel into the Democrats fundraising apparatus, which was effectively empowering the Democratic Party through donations to political activist groups, yep. which technically you could argue is fraud, but it's not. It's completely legal. So as long as Republicans don't realize they will they will slither their way through every crack in the legal system in ways that we would be like, hey, that's not fair. You're cheating. They go, according to all of these statutes, we did it by the book. And they did. So that's why Donald Trump comes out and says we need to ballot harvest. It's it's you're you're right. That there has to be ballot harvesting. But the, the RNC has to be better than the DNC. Right. Like the RNC, the ground game of the Republicans has to be bad. And I'm not talking about the politicians, the people that are running. I'm talking about the people that are administrating elections, that are working on policy, that are that are in the state, at the state level. They have to be on top of it because all this, the reasons that Donald Trump got elected or didn't get elected and didn't win the, the, the election is because of the procedural stuff that the Democrats managed to do in several states. He should have won. It, I think that the that the the issues with them not getting, you know, with the, with the COVID and stuff, had had a significant part of it. But the the at the end of the day, the responsibility for winning the election goes to the Republican Party and to the candidate. And no matter what the Democrats do, if the Republicans aren't ready for it, in my opinion. Like the and the Democrats win. That's the failure of the Republican Party, and that's detrimental to the United States as a country. I think there was enough uh, uh, for me to make a decision. Obviously, I objected to Arizona and Pennsylvania uh, that you talk about with Pennsylvania, Tim. And there were certain many of us. There were many of us that objected to the electors and this that because I do believe Donald Trump was cheated out of this election, and uh, uh, I and and I will go to my grave with that. 
we have to get a hold, we have to get a grip on this because the American people, if we lose our, our elections and the American people feel that their vote could be manipulated or lost or not counted or whatever it may be, I mean, that's a sad state of affairs. We lose our country. We better get a grip on this thing. Uh, we got to find a way to streamline the process. Yes, it's up to the individual states. I don't want, I don't want a federal takeover of our elections. Don't get me wrong. But the, some of these states need to, to uh, get together and, and, uh, and look at their, their election laws and make sure that they're fair uh, for everybody. There's, you know, uh, the idea to say we shouldn't, you don't need an ID. I mean, that's how, that's how silly it gets, though, as it relates to, uh, you know, not allowing uh, people of color and, and minorities. You, you shouldn't need an ID. I mean, we are so wide, uh, so far apart on this. Uh, with Republicans and Democrats, and because we don't want to have voter suppression, Tim, God forbid. So but the, 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 the state's legislature's got the, they got to get to work. The, 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 the view, I suppose, is if, here, here, here's the way I'll phrase it. If we had one day of voting, as the Constitution prescribes, with, may, with ID requirements, like you have to prove you, you, you are in the right place to vote, Donald Trump would easily be the president. And so when people on the right say he was cheated, it gets lost on a lot of middle of the road people who have heard too much from Trump about fraud and theft and stolen. And with the corporate press's depiction in the worst possible way of what it is people on the right are talking about, it's hard to understand. That's why my view is my, my, the way I phrase it is consistently Democrats used procedural smarmy tactics to win. They do things like a month of voting. They do things like universal mail-in mail -in voting. It's all done above board, but it's nefarious. It's malicious. And I guess what I mean is they're, they're betting on their voters being so ignorant to the process that they can implement things that are destroying the system, but it's done through, through the, the rules, right? There was a, I can't remember the guy's name. He said the United States has a loophole that can destroy, it can, it can be destroyed very easily, and that is the amendment process. The fact that you can amend the Constitution to destroy itself is a loophole for the destruction of this country. That's what Democrats do. They use the legal process in the prescribed legal manner to exploit and win and steal power. That's what I see them as doing. Like, they didn't, they didn't just send it, they didn't just one day wake up and start sending out mail-in votes illegally. They went to the governors, they went to the legislature of their states, and they said, we want to do this. And then they said, okay, and then they did it. So a legal process only requires the consent of the people who are signing off on the legislation and then the, the executive of the state to rubber stamp it and send it through. And there you go. It, what did they it, do wrong? And in some of those states, uh, obviously, there's a difference between universal ballot and ballot by mail. You get a ballot by mail, you know, you have to qualify. You could be either serving in the military or overseas, or you could be out of state, or whatever the case may be, uh, over 65, disabled, this, that. But in the state of Wisconsin, he pretty much took COVID under the color of COVID and made it in Wisconsin universal ballot. That's what they did in Wisconsin, and that's how they got 1.3 million votes. Uh, and they, they did it. And many of them, many of them, uh, t to think about 1.3 million votes coming out of Dane County, coming out of Milwaukee, uh, the two most liberal areas in Wisconsin, and Trump loses by 20,000. They rejected less than 3,000 of 1.3 million. And that's and you the don't process. have signature verification, though. But you know that they, that some of these envelopes were missing from the ballot. But that's, 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 that's it, look. So that's what, what, what the fraud, in my opinion, comes in. There sure, was sure. some fraud. I'm, was there enough fraud no, but it's, to but, change it? But, but are we talking about a crime, or are we talking about you are mad that you lost? Well, I, I just, well, number one, I never said Trump ever lost. No, no, what, <laughs> I, what I'm saying Trump is... I think Trump won the election. I just... The, these, these, the, these Democrats beat the Republican Party. They beat Donald Trump. They won. And they won through the process because I have watched this happen my whole life. Like, that, that's why I use the win red, act blue uh, example. It is the perfect example. I, when I first heard that, because I had a friend who uh, had worked on some Republican, w w initially was working for Democrats, and then switched over and started working for Republicans. And she told me the Republicans didn't start online fundraising until like three or four years after Democrats did. I'm like, that is it. But if you, if, if uh, it, what's frustrating to me is we know it's ballot harvesting because we saw it in Orange County, it exemplified it. We know that mail-in votes are overwhelmingly Democrat. We know that they champion this because they go to nursing homes 
and it's legal to do this. Well, of course, they're not going to reject their own ballots. You can argue that they're supposed to, but that's not even fraud. That's just bad procedure, I guess, that the people who are supposed to run the elections aren't rejecting ballots. What do you say about that? How do you prove they were or weren't supposed to? The worst case scenario is if you were to actually re- review those ballots, you'd say you made a mistake. These should be, uh, how do you prove intent? How do you prove anything other than they're going to do things that benefit themselves through the process in the legal system and they do it all the time. And then I'm watching this happen. I'm watching people like Scott Pressler go to Florida, for instance, and flip so many people and register so many Republicans turning the state red. And then Ron DeSantis wins by a million votes. And I'm like, look at this stuff they're doing that's working. And then I just hear from Trump and I hear from a bunch of Trump supporters that like, oh, well, it was fraud and they cheated. And I'm like, well, that's an effective way to lose. We need to address exactly what they did and how they did it. They are sitting inside the chambers of their state legislatures, smiling and smoking cigars as they rubber stamp policies that guarantee them victories. And then I just keep hearing from everybody. Nah, they cheated. This is why. Okay, dude. This is why I'm so I was so surprised that Harmie Dillon didn't win. The, the chair of the, the RNC. I feel like the Republicans need to ha- needed to have some kind of change of leadership because they completely dropped the ball. They blew it really bad with the, the, the fact that Joe Biden got elected. And then I think that the, the Harmie Dillon's, the, the election for the, the chair of the, of the mm-hmm. RNC was after uh, the election in November, wasn't it? So, yes. so they blew it in the midterms too. Yeah, and she she gets to keep her job. This is the, this is the epitome of failing up. This is, I, this, it blows this, my mind. This, this, look, like uh, I, this is why I tweeted a couple of days ago. We must actively destroy the Democrat and Republican parties. The, the, the Republican Party has a large percentage of good people. I think you, you do a great job. Obviously, Matt Gates is fantastic. Lauren Boebert does a good job. Marjorie Taylor Graham, fantastic. The whole Freedom Caucus is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. And then and a few others, too. And the Democrats have, like, one guy who's, like, maybe okay. Like, Ro Khanna, we're kind of like, well, yeah, he might be okay. Henry Coyer is a good guy. Yeah. Henry's a good guy. What but do you like about him? I just like the fact he's pro-life and he's reasonable. All right. Well, that's, that's, that's... He's that's, reasonable. Just, that's, that's just that's, being that's reasonable. Well, that, that's exactly... But that. what I see is... Reasonable. I see a malicious and evil Democratic leadership, and I see an incompetent and placative Republican Party or whatever. They they either... Uh, this is, I mean, look, the, 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 the RNC Harmeet Dillon thing is a perfect example. How did that happen? I mean, the Republicans don't deserve my vote. I would... I would so I would be so it would be so preferable for me to vote for Dave Smith, the Libertarian Party. But I don't want Democrats to win. And I do like Donald Trump. But man, do I really despise the Republican leadership. I've never been a Republican. I've never been a fan of the Republicans. I think, like like I mentioned, the win red act blue thing as an example of incompetence to me is just so profound. And when you get an opportunity with Harmeet Dillon to actually do something, they reject it. Oh, it would feel so good if they would all lose again, because I'm, because it's, it's like how many times you got to flog yourself until you correct your bad behaviors. I suppose the real issue is that the Republican leadership is purposely trying to help the democratic establishment win because they're all part of the same uniparty and that it's only the freedom caucus and other Republican upstarts that are actually trying to do something. So we're all spinning our wheels and Donald Trump was an accident that pissed off the Republican leadership. I mean, didn't Kevin McCarthy say Trump worked for Putin? Oh, now he changes his tune because he's getting forced to do so. I still don't like these people. I just see so much excuse making and a refusal to actually make the changes that need to be made to fix the problem. I'm not sure it can be fixed. You know, I, I, it's easy for me to sit here and complain. You're actually there doing the work. I'm just some dude complaining on the internet, so what do I know? How, how much are you in what? contact with, like, the RNC, and do you feel like they understand that, that you know, ballot harvesting is the future if they want to win? Do you feel like there are people at the RNC that actually are, are on these problems and, and, and are, are going to address the issues? Or do you think that they're just going to be like, well, you know, you got a job. And, eh. Yeah, I, I really don't have conversations with Rhonda McDaniel. Uh, she was reelected. Yeah. I, I will say this. There's about 25 to 30 of us, or 35 to 40 of us in the, in the Freedom Caucus. 
It's a it's a great organization. It's a great group of people, very yeah. smart people. You mentioned some very smart people in that group, and we consider ourselves America First Patriots. We put America first. Many of us, obviously, have never voted for a debt ceiling increase. We've got some of that coming up. Many of us don't necessarily support all the funding going to Ukraine. Many of us want to see a secure southern border. Many of us want to see election integrity. And, and many of us understand that this government's gotten way too big. It's out of control. The spending's out of control. Many of you? We come up, well, in the Freedom Caucus. Okay. In the Freedom Caucus. I, I can't, we, we need more members uh, that, that are like us. The fiscal conservatives, the ones that truly understand what thirty-one trillion dollars really means, yeah. uh, and 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 so it's trying to find people that are willing to take the fight to Washington. Donald Trump did that, and that's why the establishment despised him, and that's why you have guys like Paul Ryan and some of these other individuals saying, if Donald Trump is the nominee, if a Republican nominee, they won't vote for him in November. We ought to throw individuals like that out of the Republican Party. Yes. I, it, it, listen, I'm not a big fan of DeSantis. I, I think Donald Trump's the leader of our party. But if DeSantis, for some reason, becomes the nominee, I'm all in for him in November. I'll take a Republican over any Democrat. But you've got some of these rhinos and some of the establishment that don't like Donald Trump, and they'll just say the hell with the Republican Party and won't support the nominee. That's what's dangerous. We've got to kick him out of the party. Yes. Like Liz Cheney, that. Adam Kensinger should have kicked them out. Did they they got to go. Didn't, didn't, weren't yeah. they kicked out? Well, we never, we didn't really ever. We should have actually <laughs> kicked them out. There was like a not, ceremonial not, vote, not, but not Mike, enough. Mike, Mike Cern, I think it was Mike Cernovich had this great tweet that um, maybe I can actually try and pull up because I may have retweeted it. And uh, it's, it's, he's, it, Cerno's good. Cernovich is a smart dude. He's, uh, he's also was like super nice to me. Like we, we don't have any kind of uh, history or anything. He's, and he was just super polite and cool, so. Anyway. Let me see if I, yep, here we go. I got it. Let me pull it in. All right. He said, uh, uh, responding to one tweet from Daily Sunshine, Mike's, uh, uh, Daily Sunshine says, can someone explain how this works? Why doesn't more crime result in people voting out these, those responsible for safety? How do these people stay in power in a democracy? I see that it works, but I don't understand from a logical standpoint how it works. Mike Cernovich says Democrats do not have noble DNA. It's the real divide. Right wing people want freedom and dignity, which is why when we have political power, we don't use it. Utter folly. The left will live as bug men stacked on each other, pooping everywhere, needle, needles in their <laughs> arms. And he's right. So the, 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 the issue is, and I think a really good example is the, the RNC chair. After losing and losing and losing. And just being so absurdly bad at running the show, they just reelect the same people over and over again. It's, it's, it's the definition of insanity. So I suppose the issue is, it's twofold. What Mike is saying is that Republicans don't use the power. Yeah. Well, then you're going to lose. That's it. And the bug men are going to win. I feel like young conservatives that I talk to nowadays are more in line with values that the Freedom Caucus is talking about. And I think that you're going to see them become more and more isolated from the Republican leadership if they continue on the path they're on, right? If the leadership of the party continues to say, no, this is the way we've always done it, and we're going to continue to do it this way, they will lose, they will see youth voters pull away from them. And I think as we know, uh, if you can't capture young voters, then you don't really have a future. I think in some ways, time is ticking on the old guard in the Republican Party, the same way it's ticking for the old guard in the Democratic Party. The, I mean, they are drifting in all kinds of crazy directions that they cannot keep up with. I I think DeSantis is a perfect example. I, I'm, I'm really, really off uh, uh, the DeSantis train. I mean, I was, I was, I was uh, big on DeSantis a year ago, and following that's the, the press conference he gave, just seeing how he's been handling everything that's going on in the press, I am moving further and further away from him because more and more he represents to me what the, the, what the failures of the Republican Party are. He should have got up in front. When he, he was talking about, you know, digital currencies, central bank digital currencies, and he's doing a lot of good things by being up to date with the problems we're facing, with the culture war, with economic issues. I respect that. That's a good thing. And when given the opportunity to be a leader, he said no, because he was scared. I think Ron DeSantis was scared. He was scared to say F you to the anti-Trump group for whatever reason. If he thinks he is going to win 
any voter from Trump by being weaker than Trump, he is completely wrong. And I'm just, I'm looking at what Mike Cernovich said, and he made a great point that Republicans, or he said that the right want freedom of dignity, they won't use power. He's completely right. Just a bunch of cowards. And I, 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 it's, it's just every step of the way. The, the, the Democrats, let's talk about Ilhan Omar and, and Marjorie Taylor Greene. Marjorie Taylor Greene gets booted off her committees because a, a couple of years before she's elected, she posts some rambling, incoherent thing about space lasers funded by a Rothschild's bank. The media then spins that into anti-Semitism, and then she's booted from her committees because Republicans are cowards. Not all of them. Freedom Caucus, you guys are pretty good. But then you get Ilhan Omar, who makes these repeated statements in office, and then they're like, well, you know, but let's not uh, go be too hasty there. Let's just condemn all bigotry. And that's what ends up happening. Because the Democrats, Antifa, these, these leftists, they can steamroll, they can firebomb, and the media protects them. And Republicans are like, well, you know, I would say something, but the New York Times will write a mean hit piece about me. So I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. That's why people wanted Trump, because Trump told the media to, to F off. And so they're like, there you go, you do that, do, do more of that. That's why I was really excited for pushing back on Kevin McCarthy when that whole fight happened. Yeah, we did, they were, yeah. Uh, as it relates to Omar, she was removed. Uh, she was voted off of her uh, Foreign Affairs Committee. She was. After how uh, many years? Uh, well, Eric Swalwell, he was removed off of uh, Intel because of his relationship with Yum Yum. And, uh, <laughs> fong Fong. So, yeah, uh, Yum Yum. <laughs> uh, so, so he's gone. But, but, but we have made it very clear, and, and, and uh, <clears throat> listen, I was one of the ones, I was one of the Freedom Caucus guys that gave one of the, uh, the nomination speeches for Kevin McCarthy because I thought that the battle, the real battle uh, in the Republican Party is going to be uh, uh, when this important legislation comes through, like the debt ceiling. I mean, it's been pretty easy peasy up to this point, but when we got these debt ceiling increases and, and, and trying to actually pass a budget and we do spending, that's when it's going to start getting very, very difficult for Speaker McCarthy. And, and I just believe that, that right now, every decision that we make uh, as the majority in the House of Representatives has to be in the best interest of getting the White House back in 2024 because we're talking about, listen, we got a great plan, Texas. Uh, we, we all came together, the representatives, a good border security plan. Even if we could get that out of the House, it's dead in the Senate. I mean, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but we could come up with all the greatest ideas in the world here in the next two years with a Republican majority in the House of Representatives, but going to the Senate and getting anything done, I, I, I can't tell you. So that's why it's right now, it's all about a investigations because we got to expose these individuals the crooks for who they are so we can get the white house back in 2024 but Congress? legislatively you're just kind of running out the clock well, well there's nothing I, they can well, do. well no i think we owe it to the american people they gave us the gavel they're begging for leadership so they gave us the house of representatives so now let's lead let's do everything we can to pass meaningful conservative legislation through the house let the american people know that we actually really care about leadership and doing the right thing for america and america first but then it's going to go to the senate run by the democrats and it's dead so i think now it's all about uh, investigations because we need to expose this family the most corrupt family in in my humble opinion to ever serve in the white house we got to expose them for who they truly are and all of his friends in the doj the fbi all of them you should we be need to expose I, them all. I don't you should be doing investigations just because you you actually cannot pass any legislation because no, of the senate you should so always. just go and investigate because you got nothing better to do but i don't think that's going to win anything in 2024 because the game is different right now. Likely voters don't don't matter. The reason why the polling didn't make sense, right? The polls in the midterm showed it was going to be tremendous for the Republican Party. And then it was meh. And the reason for it is because when pollsters contact likely voters and say, how do you plan on voting? The likely voter tells them they make a poll based on it. The likely voter then said Republicans all the way. Then they went and knocked on doors at nursing homes and apartments and got random non-voters to vote. This changed everything. And that's probably the main reason it was so skewed this time and Republicans were caught off guard. That's the game right now. You don't need, uh, this, is, this, this is what the Republicans, the, the Republican mindset is, I'm going to go convince that person to vote for me. And the Democrats mindset is, I'm going to knock on their door and tell them to sign a piece of paper. And that's why they win. They don't got to convince them of anything. They can, they, they can use social pressure and fear, or they can, make, they can remove all barriers. 
So you got someone knock on your door and they say, the, the, I, what, what do you want? I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of the game. Did you fill out your mail-in vo uh, vote and vote for the Democrat? No, I don't want to do it. Well, if you don't vote it, if you don't fill it out right now, I will be back here tomorrow at the same time. And if, it, if you don't do it, I'll come back. And then every day they knock on the door and the guy's like, you again, fine, I'll fill out the thing. Here you go, man. Have a nice day. They win. That's, that's, it, that's all that matters. Going into, I'm imagining these like these large um, urban uh, living complexes, project housing and other uh, developments in New York, for instance, how easy it is for two 20-year-old Democrat activists campaigning on behalf of Joe Biden or anybody else to go into one building in one day, knock on a door. Did you vote? No. Fill it out. Sign, <laughs> sign, sign, your, sign your name. I can take it for you. They turn around without moving a single inch and knock on a door behind them and get another vote. Here's the crazier thing. Each of these doors could have two or three people behind them. Within, the matter, within a matter of an hour, they can have 50 votes in their, in their bag. Republicans can't do that because conservatives live in rural areas. You're going to go drive door to door. Our, our, the closest neighbor to us will take you about five minutes to walk to yeah, or, or get in your car. So I, what's Republican? Oh, sorry. I, I haven't done the research on universal ballot, how many states just mail you a ballot. I don't think it's that many. I think there are some. It's uh, the important ones. So, well, it is the important one. I understand that. And I haven't looked at the swing states. But I think, again, it goes back to the, the COVID with the emergency declaration. It allowed governors, secretary of states, and, and even county clerks to start forming their own opinion on what the emergency declaration really meant and how they could keep their people safe. Uh, social distancing, six feet, let's just mail people a ballot. You have to request a ballot by mail. So if, if somebody, if you knock on their door and everybody's got a mallet, a ballot in their... in their, uh, I didn't. I, I understand. But what, what now in a nursing home, I could understand that because if you're over 65, it's almost automatic. If you've ever requested one, you're going to get another one. It's, you shouldn't have to go and reapply every time. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that is that's where I believe, Tim, I believe that... That, that there was the fraud because a lot of these, these ballots, uh, there's documentation out there that said, I never voted. Uh, but yeah, no, you did vote. No, I never, I never but voted. But how many stories are you talking well, about? Well, I, I'm not, I'm just saying but, uh, where there's the, one, there's two, there's three. The point is, the is that it, the process, the process that we have, Tim, we have to get control of because it's not fair. It's been abused. You could say, well, the Democrats are better at it. Well, maybe they truly are, but they're still... And many, many Americans, and many of them on January 6th that came up to, to, to protest this thing, many of us are concerned about the way this country runs elections, and, and we have to do something about it because we lose the integrity of our elections. And I agree with that, but if you believe that the Democrats won in that way, you will lose again in 2024. You barely won in 2022, and you will be crushed in 2024 because it's—, it's, it's, it's You've got, I think, establishment Republican types who are happy to see the Democrats win because they hate Donald Trump, people like you mentioned, Paul Ryan. And then you have the other group that just says, we can't win because they cheated. And I'm like, okay, well, then please lose because I'm sick of hearing it. I got to be honest. Like, we, we, I, I, I remember covering all of this stuff when Texas was suing Pennsylvania, and they very carefully laid out the procedures by which they were able to boost the, the numbers for Democrats. And I just keep hearing over and over again. A month later, that it was Dominion, that it was China, that there were that there were secret ballots were stuffed under tables, and I'm like, what are you talking about? They 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 went door to door in Philadelphia, predominantly Democrat city, and they collected these from people because they used emergency powers to make it legal. Like, if we're not going to address that, and they've maintained those rules, and 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 the Republicans did nothing to stop them from codifying the emergency powers into law, okay. Then we lose. Am, I'll I, vote for am I right, uh, Tim? The state legislature in Pennsylvania is run by Democrats. Uh huh. Yeah. So that, that Wait, wouldn't surprise uh, actually, me. Actually, ah. at the time, can we look that up? Yeah. The the universal mail-in voting was was a deal between Republicans and Democrats. Okay. The Republicans wanted to get rid of down ballot, you know, voting where you can check off Democrat and vote all Democrat. Mm -hmm. They thought it would help them. That's the story, at least. And so they said, okay, if we get rid of that, we'll give you universal mail-in voting because they're stupid. Or because they were in on it and they hate Donald Trump. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that 80% of the Republican Party is actively trying to stop Donald Trump as well, especially in the state levels. Because 
you look at Donald Trump getting elected in, first of all, in 2016, they hated him. They were mad. Most Republicans were ragging on him saying this is the death of our party. You had prominent conservative speakers saying the same thing. Trump gets elected. And then what? For the next couple of years, even the Republican Party was helping the collusion narrative, which turned out to be complete and utter garbage nonsense. How was that even entertained by a single Republican? You know, me, I'll, I'll take f- full blame for being naive and be like, wow, the, the new, I don't know a lot about this. What's this what they're saying now about Trump and this Alpha Bank stuff? Now it's like lesson learned. How did the Republican Party fall for that and march in lockstep helping Democrats do all of this stuff? How did they sit there and help the impeachment narrative? I don't, I, I just don't understand. It's, 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 it's crazy to me, but I can only assume it's intentional. And then my, the, the, the big problem I have with this, this, uh, Look, after, the, after Trump loses the election, the immediate claim is the most insane thing I've ever heard. Servers being stolen in Germany, satellites being shot down. And when I said that's crazy, I had people ragging on me saying I was shilling for Biden or whatever, and that I needed to accept what the reality was. People were saying Donald Trump was going to be reinstated on March 3rd. And I said, this is the craziest thing. About, this is not going to happen. They were ballot harvesting. There's a major lawsuit about it. All of a sudden, as time goes on and Trump doesn't get reinstated and it's not March, then April, not April, then May, and none of it happens. Now I'm saying things like they were ballot harvesting and these same people are going, finally seeing it our way, eh, Tim? And I'm like, this is insane. It's, 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 my, it's, it's just mind boggling to me, but fine. If this is people finally recognizing that some dude walks into an office, stamps a piece of paper saying, give everyone a ballot whether they want it or not, and then puts it in a box, and then I remember I, when I was in New Jersey, we got ballots sent to us without asking for them. So they're, 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 they're doing everything in their power to make sure ballots are sent to everybody. And then it's very, very simple. Mom is, is collecting the mail and she walks into the kitchen and there's her 18 and 19 year old kids. And she says, fill out your ballots. And they go, I don't care about that stuff. I'm just fill out your ballots and we're going to go eat. And they go, fine, whatever. Now you got two votes from two young people who normally don't vote. Boom, more votes for Democrats. It's, it's, or she fills it out for them. Perhaps, like that woman from The View claimed she did. But that's immaterial. If the ballots are placed yeah. in their homes. But you've got to homes, sign the ballot. You've got to sign the ballot. That's why I think the fraud is. Now, you know, I, I but think there's no make, reason to say that. There's th- absolutely no reason to say it other than to demoralize your voting base. Well, I just think the, 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 the signature verification is very well documented across some of these states. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that, is that we, we had a very difficult time in 2020. I, I believe that uh, and in 2022 and and in 2022 and and we got to put a stop to it. 2024, it can't be this way. We have to do something. Maybe it's getting the White House back, getting both chambers, and doing you're, something. You're, you're, but what do you? You're do? not going to get the White House back with the way things are going. Well, I mean, like, unless I, Republicans start playing the game and figuring out what Democrats did to win and do the same thing, Republicans will lose again. So what would you like? What do you think the ballot three harvesting. things? Ballot Donald, harvesting. Donald and what Trump else? said it himself. Mm-hmm. Ballot harvesting, massive ground game. That's why I said. Sc- but th- that only works in states that mail out. The do swing you, states, like right. Pennsylvania. But then what else? Like it seems like there has to be more than just one thing because you're saying that like ground game. Re- Republicans are always behind the Democrats. Like, is there anything new we should yes. be doing? Yes. Get rid of Ronna McDaniel. Bring Har- Harmeet Dillon in. Have an, ha- RNC have an emergency session right now where they go, hey, that election, whoopsie, gone. Bring in Harmeet or, or, or anyone else. And then um, put Scott Pressler in charge of the entire National Voter Outreach Division. He should be in charge. He's probably done more for the Republican Party than any, anyone since Abraham. Okay, I don't want to go too hyperbolic here. But the dude went state by state getting people to register for the Republican Party to the point where in Florida, for the first time ever, there were more Republicans than Democrats. The Republicans have always been miserable at registering new voters. That's why even nationally, there's more Democrats than Republicans. And the Republicans only win when they can, when they finally get independent voters to swing in their direction a little bit. Scott Pressler changed that. But for the life of me, it seems like there is a complete inability to actually say, hey, Let's ask them what they did and then do that. They wrote a whole article in Time Magazine, the shadow campaign to save the election, explaining how they changed laws, how they implemented these rules, how they did these programs. And then what does the Republican Party say? I don't know. It's probably people committing fraud. And it's like, but they wrote a whole thing breaking down exactly how they did it. They, they, they told you what they did. I don't know. It's probably fraud. 
And then, like, okay, and, I, and I, the whatever, cons- lose then. It's like conservatives just listen to the argument and just accept it and just say, okay, fine. Well, if they, they've got excuses, so it's all right. Look, if the, if the argument <clears throat> is you want to use the semantic w- word fraud to represent that Democrats play underhanded games, I've heard people say the election was rigged, and they're not saying that, like, that someone stole a voting machine and hacked into it. They're saying outright that the rules were changed in a way to benefit Democrats. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They wrote a whole article we've talked about a million times, the shadow campaign to save the election from Time Magazine, where they said powerful elites, tech investors, you know, financial assets were used to change rules and get more votes for Democrats. And it worked. And it's like, okay, you need to understand that machine they built how it operates, and how to make it yourself, or it will be 2020 all over again. The fact that 2022 happened and people are thinking like, man, I guess we just didn't do as well as we thought. It's like, no, they, they are maintaining the universal mail-in voting rules to keep, like, you look at Lauren Boebert's district, right? That, what, was, what was that guy's name uh, who ran against her? Can't say, but he got close. 542 votes, I think it was. Yeah. Good grief. Now, how is that possible in a rural gun-toting district? It's because even though people live very far from each other, they've got better ground game. What I mean by that? Activists who are fervent and cult-like who will get in their cars and spend their own time and money to go ballot chasing. And conservatives and Republicans don't do that. They're just like sitting at home saying, look, look what happened after 2020 with Georgia, right? You had a, a, an interview, a man on the street thing. I think CNN ran this where he was asked, are you going to vote in the special, uh, 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 in the runoff? And he goes, no, what's the point? It's rigged anyway. And I'm like, you do two things by claiming that the election was stolen. You demoralize your voters so they don't want to vote, and you don't actually assess the, vic- the, the methods that Democrats use to win. So I'm like, it's frustrating now going on, you know, two years or so, hearing people say, especially after, especially after the midterms, when Republicans got clobbered. The the Republicans won the House very narrowly, despite the fact that the national mood is in favor of them. I mean, that's a scary prospect. To me, it feels like civil war is an inevitability because the the elections do not represent what the actual political mindset of the country is because Democrats are exploiting unlikely voters for votes and Republicans are ignoring it. Half of them are screaming that it was that the only thing they do is cheat, not understanding what's actually being done. And the other half are probably sitting back being like, well, as long as I'm getting paid, I don't care what happens. So but like I, you know, Phil brought it up with with Harmeet Dillon. I'm like right there. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I don't know. I want Trump to win. I really do. DeSantis is a letdown. Uh, Carrie Lake, I think, should have won. I'd, she'd be a great VP. But I'm kind of at the point where it's just like, until the Republican Party is completely destroyed, I don't know if I'm interested anymore uh, as a party. I mean, the Freedom Caucus is great, but maybe what needs to happen is 2024 needs to be so apocalyptically bad for Republicans that there's just no interest in being in, being a Republican anymore. And then, then finally, we can get rid of people like Ronald McDaniel. Then finally, there will be no powerful interest. Like, if the Republicans lose again, then people might actually be like, why should I invest any money in Republicans? They're going to lose. Then you will get some prominent interest in, you know, the, 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 the powers that be that have failed will leave. And then the door will be open for someone like Harmeet to finally get in and Scott Pressler and others to start cleaning things up. Hey, another great story is like Robbie Starbuck, who was trying to run for office in, uh, I think it was in Nashville, right? Mm-hmm. And, the, and the Republican Party blocked him and were trying to stop him. I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm at the point where I, I might just be satisfied watching the Republicans lose across the board because there needs to be a clean, a clean house so that they can finally realize why they're losing. But what makes you think that w- when I look at the electorate and I look at Donald Trump, I look at the policies he had and the results of his policies over four years. And for many people that I still talk to that are anti-Trump, they can't come up with a policy that they didn't like. The t- you know, the Tax Cuts and Job Act, I mean, all the stuff, wanting to secure the southern border, trying to end endless wars, all of his policies and all the great he did for four years, there are still people today that will not vote for him because they find him to be rude or obnoxious or a narcissist. 
So are we really set? Are the American people truly concerned about the problems we have are facing in this country? Or are we more concerned about the name calling? And and I said to my friends, I said, did he call you that name? The, did it affect you? No, but you know what Donald Trump's policies did? It affected you by having inflation at a point and a half and fuel that was $3 and all these positive things that Donald Trump did. But we're more concerned and set. I can't vote for that guy because he's, he's just arrogant. And I'm thinking, how do you fix a country when you have people like that? The problem is, the, now, it doesn't, I, that vote doesn't matter if you go and knock on a guy's door and he's sitting in his garage watching a football game in his man cave. And he's like, I don't know nothing about that Donald Trump. It's like, well, you don't like Biden, do you? I guess he's bad. Felt this for him. You got it, buddy. Have a nice yeah. day. So that, that, that person who says, I don't like Trump, I won't vote for him, doesn't matter. That's like that's true. But the thing is, like, I, I get what you're saying, but the I, I still revert back to, to my earlier statement that it's the responsibility of the RNC to win elections. Right. That, that's the that's the they're supposed to help Republicans win elections. That's the whole reason for them being. They have blown it. What is the RN? And I know that you don't know yourself personally. I, I, you're a member of Congress. I'm not trying to put the onus on you to answer for them. But unless the RNC decides that they want to do the things necessary to support candidates and win and really do those things, they're not going to win. And it looks to me going judging by the last election that they aren't they don't have smart people strategizing to win that actually are aware of what the democrats are doing it's it's plain to see what the democrats are doing they don't hide their their philosophies they don't hide their goals they don't hide their strategies so why is it that nobody in the rnc knows what they wrote an article yeah the shadow campaign they, to save the election where they break down they're like we had voter in the park and we got universal mail-in voting and we went door to door and we were ballot chasing and we were doing all these things all made legal by our allies and our courts and it's like maybe maybe the real investment opportunity is the libertarian party with um hey. the mises caucus you know you've got um tremendous growth in that in that area and millennials and gen z i think a third consider themselves to be independent or uh, um, more than a third, they, they favor neither party. And so I, I really do think that the biggest mistake the Republicans made was reelecting Ronna McDaniel. It shows they're completely out of touch. And look, man, I grew up in Chicago, you know, Chicago urban liberal type. I voted for Donald Trump and the Republicans in 2020 because his policy was more in line with everything I'd been talking about and agreed with. So it would be insane not to, but I want to win, you know, and, and in, in 2022, seeing, despite the fact that you can look at all the polls and see the, 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 it's not a silent majority. It's a vocal majority that are saying things like the economy is bad. It was, it was years of conversations about high gas prices, about food shortages, the famous mayonnaise gate story where the left attacked a local restaurateur because he said he was spending like 200 bucks a week in mayonnaise. And he was like, yeah, I have a 250 person capacity restaurant. We're typically full and we use mayonnaise for dressings and for sandwiches and for dips. And they insulted the guy and called him far right for simply saying mayonnaise was expensive. And I'm just like, after all of that. It's because mayonnaise is white. That's probably why. But it's just like, it's, it's, I, I called the restaurant, I talked to the guy and he's like, this is crazy. I've talk, spoken to so many regular people across the board, and it seems like the sentiment is all in line more with the Republican Party, but the Republican Party is run by incompetent people. And so I'm kind of thinking, yeah, I'd like Trump to win, but I'd also prefer winning. So maybe if we can't win in 2024, because of, like you look how bad it was in 2022, 2020 and 2022, then it's like, okay, maybe instead of investing all of our time and energy into 2024 with a split party that's fighting amongst itself over whether or not Trump should even be the nominee, over whether or not ballot harvesting was the problem in the first place, over whether or not Trump won or didn't win, I'll just put all the resources into the Libertarian Party. Maybe we'll knock them up a few, a few percentage points this time around so that by 2032, maybe they'll have enough points to get on a debate stage with the National Debate Commission or something. Because otherwise I'm like, Right now, I do believe, based on the track record of economics, Trump is on track to win. Because Biden, they can't. But if they bring in Michelle Obama, 
I think there's a strong possibility Michelle Obama wins. I think it's a way. I think it's more than a strong possibility. I think, think it's, it's slam dunk. Really, really. You're probably right. Really, Be- because it, you combine everything we've already talked about yeah. with the the mechanisms they've created to win with Michelle Obama as celebrity personality. Yeah, probably. I don't. I I think that even. If, if Biden announces he's not running and they field Michelle, I think there are enough strong Democrat candidates that will make her look foolish in terms of actual policy, right? Like, she may have the celebrity and she was the first lady, but she doesn't, I mean, she, what, she was a lawyer at one point? Like, she hasn't been practicing in the field for a long time. I honestly think Gavin Newsom would be able to get the nomination over her, and I think Gavin Newsom is crazy. I also think, aesthetically, he is not what... Uh, the Democratic Party wants. I think that it's easy to be frustrated. I'm not saying that you're wrong to say that, you know, there are all kinds of things that the Republican Party should be doing. uh, And I am very interested in the future of the Libertarian Party. But I think that the voting base does believe in Trump, even if the leadership doesn't. I think that you will see uh, people wanting him to win. And even if the party doesn't do the things they should, I think ultimately, it's dying anyways. Like, yes, they put Ron McDaniels back in, but I don't think she'll win again. I think that they are seeing the tides turn. I don't think that they will be able to continue to squeak by on the little confidence that the voters have on them if they aren't willing to get behind their, their preferred candidate. Yep. I don't know. Trump needs to win. Well, I'll, I'll finish it with this. 74 million votes. Donald Trump got 74 million votes. He'll get 74, 75 million votes in 2024. Uh, and he'll win with that. Uh, Joe Biden ended up with 81 million votes. It's because of a universal ballot, and they all use COVID as the excuse. We will not have COVID now to just send ballots to everybody and everybody's brother and have no accountability. So Donald Trump will be the f- uh, 47th president with 75 million votes. If we so one thing, the COVID loopholes. I, 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 I love the sentiment. I love the prospect, and I hope. But one thing that needs to be considered by the Republican Party is that It is 2023. It has been uh, quite some time since Donald Trump was elected. I think it's it's not it's been about six, six years and a few months since the uh, 2016 election. But the Donald Trump election cycle was 2015 talks of it, um, some campaigning. I I think he did a lot of campaigning in 2015. Right. And then 2016 was the primaries. I'm sorry. 2016 was the actual um, full presidential campaign. So uh, somebody who was 10 years old in 2015, whose mother was crying watching TV, will be voting this time around. And and there's going to be a bunch of kids who are around that age, who are young preteens, whose entire worldview is crafted upon Orange Hitler, and they will be voting this time around as well. TikTok has radicalized them. Other social media platforms are radicalizing them. So I think uh, if it's Michelle Obama, it might end up being 90, 100 million Because you combine the fact that they're going to have a brainwashed youth base with their ballot harvesting mechanisms and other outreach programs, yeah, Donald Trump might actually get 80 million this time around. I think so. Because a lot of older people. But uh, you've got to take in consideration the changing demographics. There's going to be less uh, boomer voters because they're aging out, as it were. And there's going to be more Gen Z and millennial voters who are typically, or at least large numbers, Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Putting it lightly. I don't want to swear. But yeah, out of their minds. I mean, we had somebody on the show, Vosh. I asked him about, you know, Biden in, in 2012 and like the, the collapse and stuff. And he says, I don't know. I was in high school. I have no idea what happened. He just starts talking about horse penises. Did he? That's, that's, ah. a, that's a Vosh joke. The internet will understand. I'm sorry. Ah. No, just... Uh, He's, he was like, I'm, I'm, he's like, I'm 26. I don't remember Joe Biden. And I'm like, uh. so these, these people don't even know anything about him. Who knows who they'll run? No idea. Could be AOC. I mean, it really could. I think they'll have a really hectic year. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but I just think that there is no clear front runner. I think Biden is making it worse for them by the fact that he doesn't want to step down. I also think that uh, the DCCC is already having a hard time because they want to move where they're having their first primaries and it's already dividing the party uh, by the states, right? I mean, New Hampshire is saying that they will not give up their first first the nation primary. I mean, th- this party is in chaos. We just feel 
we're used to them being like this. So it doesn't seem like it. They they can't, they don't have a front runner nominee and they don't know where they're having primaries. I mean, that's bizarre. Well, again, he got 74 million votes. And I think uh, when the average person looks at uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump and his successes. And when you look at his success with the minority communities, the opportunity zones that he created, the uh, unemployment rates among uh, minority groups and everybody. I mean, our country was on cruise control. It was the safest. I mean, our, our global security. I mean, we didn't have all these issues with, with little rocket man teasing South Korea. He kept Putin in check, never went into Ukraine under Trump, went in and took Crimea in 2014, and then goes under, uh, goes back into Ukraine under this, uh, the weak president we have today. And then uh, he did a good job with Xi Jinping keeping him and not toying with Taiwan. So I think if, if, if you have a, a half a brain and you're concerned about this country and the direction it's going, and and I, I can't see how you could not vote for Donald but, Trump. But, but listen, here, here's, I, I, here, you're right, but think of it this way. There is a smart man and woman, and they're at the grocery store, and they're looking at the ingredients because they're concerned about the amount of sugars and preservatives. And you walk up to them and say, quick question, you vote for Donald Trump? And they go, hmm, I might, convince me. And then you talk to them for a few minutes and they go, you make some good points, I'll consider it. Then the Democrat walks up to two people who are buying ho-hos and ding-dongs, and they are like, yo, Biden, and they go up there, and they high-five, and then they vote for Biden. Good luck. I think that's why they want this perp walk photo so badly, right? Yeah. Like, this is why they want it handcuffs, so anyone who comes to collect ballots can be like, Well, that's why 90% of the him. electorate, uh, uh, Hannah, 90% of the electorate, they know who they're voting for before, they know who they're voting for today. It's that 10%, it's those independents that we have to focus on. We didn't do very well, Tim, I'm going to agree, we didn't do very well in, in 2022 with them, but something's got to change for 2024. Yeah, but, but actually, uh, Republicans did do well, but Democrats yeah. ballot harvested. Yeah. Well, again, uh, we got to do better with the independents, though, as well. So, I, I listen, do I have an answer to all this? I just don't believe that that you're going to see all these ballots. Donald Trump has 74 million votes. This is the most votes ever in a presidential election in the history of our country. And all of a sudden, Joe Biden gets 81 million by sitting in his in his basement, by sitting in his basement. You could say it was ballot harvesting. I think there was some, okay, ballot harvesting, but I believe there well, was some, uh, the, some from fraud and governors and secretaries of state and county clerks and others abused it. Secretaries of state, they abused the, the, the election laws in their individual states under the color of COVID because of the national declaration. It was an emergency. So we had to make these decisions. These governors in some of these states never even called their legislatures back. They didn't have to because they're in the state of Texas, a good example. Uh, Governor Abbott could do what he wanted unilaterally. He didn't have to get his, he didn't have to call back his state legislature, his state senators and, and representatives because it was under an emergency declaration. And that's what governors did in, in many of these liberal states or these moderate states. They, they, they abused. Uh, and those policies have all been codified outside of the emergency provisions and still exist to this day and will be used again. Yeah. So that's why if the Republicans don't figure out that this is all within the confine, it is all within the law, it's been codified. Legislatures have signed them, sealed it, stamped it, and it's good. They're going to lose. Donald Trump got more uh, votes than any incumbent in a re-election. And then Joe Biden got more. And what I told Steve Bannon was, it's because Donald Trump was anti-elected. Nobody was voting for Joe Biden. They were voting against Trump. People kept looking at the polls. And I would see Trump supporters be like, enthusiasm for Biden is 26%. Trump can't lose. And then I would look at the poll and it would say, enthusiasm against Trump was 96%. Enthusiasm for Trump was 94%. And I'm like, that's your metric. Atlantic wrote the article. I talked about it a lot. Stay alive, Joe Biden. All we need is your corporeal form. They were saying in plain, plain earshot of every single person, we don't care about Joe Biden. No one is actually voting for him. We are voting his name because we don't want Trump. That's what they were doing. So now they have the mechanisms to do it again. And the Republicans are fighting with themselves or maintaining incompetent leadership. I mean, do you think that Democrats really would vote for Biden again? Do you think they'll just fall in line? Because he is no. not doing well. He's not popular. It, well, it can't be Biden. But using these same mechanisms, if like, look, Donald Trump said it. It's all that matters. All right. Donald Trump believes it. And he's right. Ballot harvesting. 
We have to become masters of ballot harvesting. And Donald Trump said something to that effect because he understands, and I'm glad he does. And that gives me some confidence that their, the Republican Party, or at least Donald Trump, is paying attention to what exactly happened. Because spending, spending years talking about Dominion and China and all this stuff and German servers and fraud was not solving the problem. Donald Trump, and, and that's why last year I was like, I'm probably for DeSantis at this point because he's effective, he's doing these great things, and all Donald Trump was talking about was fraud, fraud, fraud. You will never win an election if that's all you do. Now Donald Trump is, he's back. He's, he's calling out the BS. He went to East Palestine. He bought McDonald's for first responders, a very human thing to do. I loved it. And he talked about ballot harvesting and how we've got, we got to do this to win. And I'm like, we got strategy. We got energy. We got real campaign work going on. This guy's got to win. Yeah, I, I think agree. it's the energy. It, it, and Phil, I don't know. I, I talk to a lot of people and just kind of ask about Donald Trump. And I said, what don't you like about him? And I've never had anybody ever come up and say, I didn't like this certain policy. It was all personal. 100%, yeah. It, it was like, well, I, I don't like what he said about John McCain. I don't like he's he's a shrew, he's rude. Again, I, I talked to you know, a narcissist and all that stuff, and I'm thinking to myself, but how does that affect you every day? What affects you every day are the policies and the results with the inflation and the fuel, and our economy was thriving. Isn't that more important? But people just kind of look at it and say, I just don't like him. And if that is the mindset today that I just, uh, you know, he had, we had a great country under Donald Trump and, and he's coming back. He's the only guy, in my humble opinion, that can save this country. He's the only guy that can save this country. Uh, I, I have saddled my horse. I just believe that Donald Trump is the leader of the Republican Party. DeSantis seems like he's a nice guy, but he blew it the other day. And I just hope and pray. I tell you, Tim, uh, we can't afford four more years of, of Joe Biden or any other Democrat. We just can't afford four more years. You think you have, you're going to have four different sets of bathrooms. You're going to have co everything, swim teams, men, women, doing this, doing that, transgender, everything. We're going to get rid of your truck. If you have a diesel out there, tow it out of this lot because no, you can't have a diesel. Get rid of it. <laughs> can't have it. Uh, and, and, and so our country is going off a cliff. And if the American people can't see that, it's right in front of their face. The Republicans, we got to wake up. We have to wake up because this has been coming. This has been in front of us. And we have completely, I don't know, ignored it. Or we just think it wasn't important. But we have to wake up and we got to save our country. We're going to go to Super Chats. But I, I do want to continue that conversation in the members only portion. And then bring in our good friends who are hanging out in the TimCast members Discord to talk about the election and what's going on as well. So we'd love to hear from your questions. So become a member at TimCast.com. So that means, don't not on YouTube, because uh, it means go to TimCast.com, the website, click join us. There's a Discord uh, uh, button in the menu that will explain to you how to sign up and get in. And then you can join, uh, There's read the rules and understand if you're a $10 a month member for at least six months, you get access to the voice room. If you want to immediately just jump the line, 25 bucks a month. Understand that we have to do some kind of gating, either time gate or money gate to keep out bad actors who are going to try and get everything shut down. So it is what it is. But uh, I think it'll be great to bring in some um, some uh, questions from the from the audience on this one. But let's read Super Chats. So uh, also smash that like button and uh, let's read. All right. Coldilocks Production says the struggle of today is not altogether for today. It is for a vast future also. Abraham Lincoln, annual message to Congress, December 3rd, 1861. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, Sketch Therapy says, I'm canceling my membership. Um, F open chat. I paid to avoid open chat. You said you wouldn't have to deal with these trolls. So what we've done is, instead of being a YouTube member, you can become a member at TimCast.com and join the Discord, where we have a screening process so that and rules so you can avoid all of that stuff. So instead of having to spend 10 bucks there and five bucks here, it's the same 10 bucks now getting you access. So we've, we've centralized it all to save you money to hopefully. So, so yes, if, if you are unhappy with the, the reopening of the YouTube chat, then just use your website membership or join the website and you can go into the exclusive 24 seven conversation talking about news and stuff. I was in there earlier today post some breaking news, and we're going to get the TimCast crew in there periodically. I think some of our writers were actually just hanging out talking to people. It was kind of fun. People posted memes. All right. 
Jonathan E says the 15 minute city chicken coop guy is former Ontario MPP Randy Hillier, who, along with Maxine uh, Maxim Bernier and Derek Sloan, was among the few Canuck politicians to oppose Fauchism. Randy'd be a great guest. I agree. It was funny. Do you know what a 15 minute city is? No. They're proposing these. Uh, in the future, you'll all live in a 15 minute city where everything you need is, is within 15 minutes of you. And you won't need to go anywhere or do anything because it's all right there. And this guy made a funny video where he was like, I'd like to show you an example of how a 15 minute city would work. And then he opens a chicken coop and he's like, all of their food is here. Their water, it's warm and safe. There's no reason to leave. They can leave if they want, but they don't want to. And then I can go over and starts grabbing their eggs and take what they produce. See, they own nothing and they're happy. And yep, they treat us like chickens. All right. Yeah, but Trump says, so this one time on Bandcamp, I made these songs. They decided I wasn't woke <laughs> enough and they deleted my account and the content. They also deleted, I believe, Bryson Gray and Five Times August. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to make an, if none of these accounts should have been deleted. But the songs we had up, the lyrics are like, you know, uh, will of, the will of the people is a story about a revolution. There's no one being named. There's no, the, 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 there's a political message on revolutions. And that was it. You know, I wish I could find the way to restore peace. Blessed were the days we held in vain. Like, they banned that. So, I just want to tell you this. To everybody who, uh, when I played the clip at the beginning of the show, I saw people being like, you know, it's emo, and I have people criticizing it. You know, let me just tell you something. First and foremost, I've been playing music my whole life. You don't have to like it. You're allowed not to. And then I will also say, we are, build we are trying to do things that are impacting culture, and all three songs we've released have charted on Billboard. That's a 100% success rate so far. That's bigger than many mainstream major label bands. Major labels sign these big artists, put them on tours, spend millions of dollars, and they might get one or two to actually chart. We've done three for three, and we haven't spent that much money. If we can do things like this, and it succeeds and we make money and we expand, imagine what we can do when we actually start bringing in new artists signing more people and grow that portion of the business. For the time being, we are spending very little and making very little, but having tremendous success. Hopefully this will be song number four to chart on Billboard in its first release week. I think it will if you guys support us. And then uh, we got a video game coming out. I'm also going to say this too. We have the Elite Club at TimCast.com. And a lot of people are shocked. It's a hundred bucks a month. And you get access to the Elite Club Discord. But we are also, I, I don't want to speak too much about what goes on behind the scenes, but I will just say many of the people, uh, we're, we're planning on giving Elite Club members direct access to alpha test, beta test, pre-releases, access. I, I don't want to say too much because I might freak people out who work here, but we need play testers. We need, uh, uh, you know, things like that. And so we're thinking that's probably the best way to do it, the Elite Club. So, you know, if you're interested, we got a video game. It's really fun. And we've teamed up with Freedom Tunes for it's, it's basically a Freedom Tunes video game that we are putting all the work behind and it's Freedom Tunes themed art and everything. So I'm really excited for that. Shout out to Seamus Coglin. All right, let's grab some more Super Chats. All right. Cam Girl Asuna says, if Trump gets arrested, it will be proof that our country has truly fallen. It will prove the institutions can no longer be counted on to resolve these differences. We will have one choice left to have freedom, civil war. Yikes. I hope not, man. But um, we'll talk about that in the members only portion because I do kind of feel like I don't know if we have any. Uh, I, I don't know if there's, there's a choice. Aaron says DeSantis is a traitor. I voted for him and I live in Florida. Wow, those are strong words, man. Those are very strong words. Chris Pavoto says to the Texas rep, I sent you and 47 other Texas reps a very detailed letter about Down syndrome and Texas Medicare support. Without your office responding on your advice last time on IRL, why the silence? Except those with a D next to their their name. Look it up. Sent July 2022. I don't know. All right, where are we at? Bobcat says, "Buy chickens and cluck the government." That was a very very good video. I really do like it. T Rex Petchup, sa Petchup says, "My main Twitter account got suspended a while ago." So couldn't create account for T-Rex Pet Shop. I messaged Ian on his website, Mines, and Instagram. He can email and text or call us from the website directly. Let's work together. We will, uh, well, let's try and put a reminder for, uh, for Ian. Yeah. We keep trying to reach out to you. 
We'll get to it. I promise. All right. MSK GWD says Orange Wave 2024. Trump Bitcoin having two forces of nature that can't be stopped. That is very interesting. Hmm. Bitcoin allegedly uh, uh, reportedly going to hit a million bucks in a few months. And Bitcoin is, you know, like the orange pill. That's what Max Kaiser calls it. Donald Trump is the orange man. Maybe we will have a, a fusion of the crypto and Trump economy. And, you know, there you go. My fake Instagram profile will tell you all about it. It's still giving out crypto advice. Instagram <laughs> won't take it down. <laughs> Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Tim, honestly, do you really think normies give an ish if Trump gets arrested? They never cared about anything but sports ball and celebrities. Yeah, normies probably don't. But the moderates that the Republicans need to win, it's, it's going <clears> to <throat> light a fire under them. Like, I've talked to a lot of people. A lot of people who were not conservative who voted for Trump were the stop making me defend Trump camp, where it's like you were lying about him. What's wrong with you? And then being like, you know, what? Trump's not that bad. Take someone like that and play a video of Trump getting arrested. And they're going to be like, this is going too far. These people have lost their minds. They need to be stopped. And you'll get a vote for Trump. All right. What do we got? The Great Treasure says, I watch every day, love the show, and all you're doing to grow. Great guest. Keep up the great work. Tim and team, you should have Ray Comfort on this channel on our new Friday show. Stay strong, keep the faith, and stay focused. Will do. Garant says, AOC would counter Trump after the first debate by coming out tassels spinning on a pole. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't know if I find that one as funny. I mean... If they, if they made a comment about something more related to AOC's character and personality and things she does, then, you yeah, know. Like I just wasn't expecting it. That one yeah. caught me off guard. The surprise was good. Like, if she came out and, you know. Easy. I, it's I, hard I, to imagine what she would do. To counter no, I mean, like, if, if you wanted to, like, to make a joke about what her behavior would be like on the, on the debate stage, it would be like doing a sassy Latina voice or saying something in Spanish. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. probably not mm -hmm. that out of the ordinary, I mean, yeah, within her like, character. Like she, really she runs, but Alex Stein is her press secretary. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's I something wish. that... She comes Trump out would... in an Alex Stein t-shirt. Oh, my goodness. That would make his life. <laughs> Monk in training says, Michelle isn't a political figure. She won't run. She hates the White House and politics. She won't run. Perhaps. That has yeah. nothing to do with whether or not she'd win. True, yeah. All right. Uh, one individual... Uh, BS is asking why you aren't bringing impeachment to the floor daily. Daily may be a bit hyperbolic, but uh, what's your view on impeachment? Well, number one, I don't know what uh, what purpose it serves. I think that she is worse than he. Uh, yeah. I don't think Kamala Harris is, is ready for that. Uh, he is an absolute failure. Joe Biden is a failure. I don't support him in any form or fashion. But again... I got to make the comment. I want him to be the nominee. I don't, I, <laughs> That's I do a good not, point. <laughs> I, I just I don't want him impeached. You you will not see me file uh, articles of impeachment on Joe Biden because I want him to be the nominee for the Democrats in 2024. I think Kamala Harris is a dismal failure. She broke the glass ceiling, but she can't put a you know a sentence together. And and you can see the Democrats what they've done. They've kind of pushed her to the side and they've kind of hit her. They don't want her out front anymore because she's embarrassing, quite honestly. So uh, that, 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 that's a fantastic answer. Because, you know, I'm like, Joe Biden should be impeached, but now I'm not so no, sure. No, 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 no. We I'm need like, to keep him right where he's at. <laughs> send him, get your people, send him $25 because we want him to be the nominee. It's like Michael Malice talking about Fetterman. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, maybe the weakest flailing Dottard is the guy you want in because he's the guy Trump's going to, you know. Yeah. Win against because because if he's not there, then maybe it is Michelle. I don't know. When do you think we'll hear from Biden on what his plans are for? Real he said he already said he's running. He said he's running, but they haven't yeah. really yeah. formally announced. I mean, they keep sort of saying he will, but then they're like, "Oh, he's going to make a decision. Soon. He's going to talk to Jill." I think there's a certain amount. Uh, there's a certain amount of Democrats that don't want to see Joe Biden run uh, for re-election because they want someone else. Maybe they want to start fresh, mm -hmm. start new. So some of these investigations that we're conducting, they actually want to see us come up with some good evidence to force him. They want us to come up with some stuff on Hunter and get enough probable cause, so to speak, 
that that will expose that family for who they truly are to put enough pressure on Joe Biden to get him out of the race. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there, there is a, there's a certain group of those Democrats that enjoy what's happening right now with Jim Jordan and Comer on these investigations with the Biden family because they want us to take it to the point where Joe Biden will just, he will have to, uh, he, he won't be able to seek reelection because he's been damaged by the Republicans and there's Democrats that want to and see And they that don't happen. have to do it themselves. Yeah. I mean, they're letting right. you do the work. That's right. You know, I'm thinking about it. There's, I, I, I want Trump to win, but I really, really want a three-way debate with Joe Biden, Donald Trump, and Dave Smith. Yeah. I, I just think that would be absolutely fantastic. I think Amazing television. <laughs> I think Dave would go hard on, on, on he, would, he would go after Trump pretty well. Trump would respond pretty well, I think. Biden would be dis would just it be would, destroyed. It would be like, you know, because cause Dave's going to talk to Trump about foreign policy and he's going to say, with all due respect, these things, these things, and Trump's going to say, you don't understand with this, that, and Biden's going to be like, rrr, rrr, and then they're both going to turn and look at him and be like, now let's talk about you, and then it's just going to be, woo. I think it would honestly make people uncomfortable to watch because I think they would be able to verbally outmaneuver Biden so easily. And then obviously intellectually, like totally different level. People are going to watch it and be like, he's just getting wrecked. It's like when you watch one of those WWE fights and there's like an older fighter who's retiring and like he gets beaten up really bad. And you're sort of like, I don't, I don't really like this. Like, look, I feel elder, like you should step out. Look, elder abuse is my kink. So I kind of like oh, the gosh. idea. But, uh, Phil, go home. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I can't think of anything more enjoyable to do uh, watching TV than watch <laughs> Smith always, and Trump beat the crap out of, out of tapioca brain Joe Pudding. Oh, Joe Pudding. All I just right. always J wanted, Girls, sorry, go ahead. J Girl says, not cheating, it's optimizing. Used by consultants and tech workers in their corporate work. Republicans just have tech illiterate campaign runners. Uh, to that effect, something that effect, like the, 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 the act blue win red thing was shocking to me when I found that out. I was like, how do you run the second biggest political party and not have a tech division running digital fundraising for you? It's crazy to me. But, you know, it is what it is. All right, let's see what we got. MF Damien says, voting for party regards of candidate quality is the slow growing terminal cancer that's got us to this point. Stop rewarding it. Yeah, but that's why, you know, some people have like to they, the libertarians tell me like you can't vote for Trump because it's the lesser of two evils. You got to change the thing and vote for libertarians. And I'm like, nah, 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 dude, that argument worked like in 2008 and 2012. But then we got Trump and Trump's not the lesser of two evils. Trump's actually OK, pretty good in some ways. Best foreign policy of my life. Um, and anybody who says otherwise is lying. Abraham Accords, right? Afghanistan withdrawal plans, not implementation. Biden screwed that up. The, the negotiation with Kim Jong-un was, was, was historic. It's insane to me. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic, and the economy was great. So lesser of two evils, I'm like, this guy was standing up for this country. He was securing its borders. He was bringing jobs back. He was, set, he was doing good work for the, union, for the union middle class guys. He was doing good on foreign policy. How is that evil other than like he wasn't doing enough to immediately end the foreign wars he was winding them down and how could the former speaker of the house publicly state that he couldn't support donald trump in november because he's evil think about that now. yeah he's the former speaker of the house not too I long ago i i don't i don't trust I, those people I, I, yeah i think i think they're power hungry evil elitist authoritarians and i think donald trump is narcissistic and uh arrogance that's an understatement but i think he knows what he wants i think he does like helping people i think he does want to fix america i think he does love this country i think he's got some character defects again understatement but it's like do you want the guy who's got character defects and kind of sounds nasty but makes the machine run it's like the way i described it a few years ago is you can hire the plumber who doesn't know what he's doing and is confused the whole time or the plumber who's one of the best in the business, but he won't stop cussing up a storm in your bathroom. Uh, I got to be honest. I'll take the guy who's cussing because he's going to fix the pipes. I don't want crap flying all over the place. I'm not going to ca call the other company where the guy can't fix the plumbing because he's nice to me. You know, it, it, nice is good. but And Trump is a nice guy if you're nice to him. That's, that's the reality. I, I've, I've heard too many stories of Trump being a good, good person to other people. And he's only mean when people are mean to him. My wife, I had an opportunity to take my wife down a visit with him. And uh, 
you know, she didn't like some of his, you know, his comments and thought he was somewhat rude. And I said, well, baby's from New York and he's a, he's a very successful businessman. But after she had an opportunity to engage with him and meet him, she had a different take on him. And, and, and I, I've said it several times, I, I don't know of a guy that, that loves this country more than he does. He puts the American people first. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm like, listen, we're a great country. We, we've, we've done so well. We're the greatest country in the world. We've helped others. But I'm telling you right now, what about taking care of the American people first before we just start throwing billions of dollars into Ukraine? What about our own southern border? What about the homelessness? What about the mental illness that we have in this country? What about the crime in this country? But we're more concerned about spending billions and billions of dollars and sending it to Ukraine in a war that I, quite, I, quite, I can't really understand. The, the administration here doesn't even have a real strategy as it relates to Ukraine. And that's just going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly, Tim, because the negotiation, he's going to want Crimea back. He's Zelensky's going to want Crimea back. It's not happening. Yeah. All right. The Tennessee tornado says agreed. The Democrats are a cult. But how is turning on someone because they won't kiss Trump's ass? Not also a cult. I agree with you. That's why I've said there's a Trump cult for sure. A lot of people who are like crazy Trump's burning DeSantis flags. I'm like, yo, that's weird. <laughs> but there's not that many of them. It's like five guys stand outside a Trump Tower waving flags. And they have, there, there's some with an online presence. There's a few, there's probably tens of thousands, maybe. But if we're talking about 74 million Trump voters, these are regular people. That's it. The Democrats, you got to be nuts to vote for Joe Biden. You got to be mindless zombies to vote for that guy. You have, for Trump to have gained 12 million votes, that means people had to actively resist the corporate press and learn something for themselves and say, you know what? I got to vote for this guy. That's not a cult. You know, but the media is going to keep lying, so... All right. Kenny Cab says, put ballot boxes in churches, nursing homes, and gun ranges. Right there. There's a, there, gun ranges. That's a good one. I like that. All right. Where we go? Where we got? Uh, let's see. Let's see where we at. Uh, bu- 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 bu. What, I'm trying to read this one. What well, is this? Tim's finding super chats. Can you tell us about the uh, pilot legislation that you're working on right now? I think it's kind of interesting because so many people, especially going to spring and everything, are traveling and are experiencing the problems with like yeah. the, the travel, the airline pro- the issues. Yeah, Hannah, I serve on the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, and I'm the chairman over pipelines or hazardous material pipelines and rails. Oh wow, uh, so you've kind been of busy. interesting. I, yeah, I've been to I've been to East Palestine uh, uh, before, but uh, right now there's a, a shortage of pilots. Obviously, if you f- we fly a lot obviously there's a shortage of pilots and the current law is once you turn 65 you can no longer fly the big the big airlines um uh, so what we're trying to do is uh, have legislation to take it from 65 to 67 which just makes sense i I can't see now now the alpa which is the big union for many of these big airline airlines uh they're against it um but i i just think it makes sense and i think we're gonna we're getting some momentum uh, we got some senators over there that are, are, are drafted their own legislation, very similar to my legislation. And I think we're going to get this through because it just makes sense. What is, I, what's the union's reason for being against it? Well, they really don't. They say that they have data, scientific data that says that going 65 to 67 could be related to health issues. But these same pilots are going through, they're taking their EKGs, they go through vigorous physical assessments and, and, and health assessments. So uh, I just think maybe it's because, you know, these guys up at the top that have been there for 30 years are probably holding their slot, you know, and they want that slot, they want that, that seniority. So maybe they could get the the better flights and have, you know, and choose what they want to do and where they want to fly. So uh, I, it, it makes no sense to me. And I've had a lot of them inside my office over the last couple of weeks. And, and these guys, I tell you, you look at them, you want those guys in the cockpit. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase. It's not a cockpit. It's a flight deck. <laughs> it's a flight deck. I can't say cockpit because that's offensive. So it's in the, it's in the flight deck. Uh, and I want the most experienced, qualified person in that flight deck. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of guys in cockpit that Cockpit is offensive? Oh well, yeah. What if we feminize it and call Don't it? Don't like say a, crewman either. What if we? What if we feminize? Do not say a crewman. It's co- a crew if, person. If, if it's if it's offensive because cockpit it's, is masculine, what if we made it feminine like snizzhole? 
twat room. I, I don't twat. like it. Oh, my. I'm just going to well, say, I don't feel well, more I'm included. Just, I don't. Well, I but like hit, I, hole, you know, yeah. and like cock and sniz. So but sniz. Th- this is how silly this is getting. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- this is how silly this is getting with we're having to change words, cockpit, and, and you can't say crewman anymore, and now it's crew person. I mean, it's just getting absolutely silly. I, know, you know, I people, mean, flight attendant. But that was the first People get mad said. at us right, right. because we have cock town. You know, right. roosters, hey, that's a technical cockerels. Term. Right. Yeah. It's a, it, it is a it is a scientific reference. Yeah. It is a town full of cocks. But that's the legislation. It'll be good for the airline industry, and we're going to get it done. Why did they pick sixty five? It was just well, it's, it, it, they years said ago they changed it. Data. They changed it from sixty to sixty five. It was sixty. Okay. They changed it to sixty five. We just want to take it to sixty seven. Cool. All right, Patrick C. says, Tim, you forgot about Gen X. We haven't aged out to die, lol. And most of us are very right leaning. I didn't forget. It's, we just don't think about you. No, it's just not relevant to bring up because you're not dying. That's the point. Your votes are still there. Boomers are relevant to the conversation because many of them are dying, retiring, or just not voting. Gen Xers are there voting, but millennials and Gen Z are crazy. You see, it was a compliment without referencing you. I was pointing out that we don't need to worry about Gen Z because y'all are doing all right, but millennials and Gen Z are nuts. So, well, I mean, I think most people who watch the show are actually millennials, so we're doing all right, I guess. So I appreciate that. So we'll, 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 we'll got to get it done. All right. Max Morano says, as a business owner, I work for over 150 aesthetic medical practices across the country. The affluent are not spending money. If the rich are not spending, the poor are not spending. I have way more insight and would like to speak with you about this call or email. Let me just say that, um, looking at all of the, um, ad spending, like I think the economy is about to collapse. Very, very, very much so. Because I'm looking at our numbers and looking at what BuzzFeed reported. I think even Vice Media is on the verge of collapse, like outright total just bankruptcy. That's the, I, I didn't even know. I didn't even see this. It was like last month that Vice is talking about going bankrupt or something like that. Bankrupt. Vice. Five years ago, six years ago, they were like worth five, six billion dollars. Bankrupt. Yeah. It's getting bad. Happens so, faster than you think. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we're f- like we're we're doing fine financially, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, if we want to expand, like we need to bring on you know more members and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know if it does get substantially worse. I'm talking like double, triple. Then we'll be in trouble. And we're doing better than BuzzFeed, and you know, ad rates are down. But that's why we shifted to a membership-based uh, company. So if you want to see us uh, keep doing this, then become a member at TimCast.com. Smash that like button. Uh, support the show. We're, we have set up the Discord channel. And um, as an aside, I also have been like, talk, I, I texted the, uh, the CEO of Rumble. I was like, guys, you need to make your own version of Discord. Because like, you know. That'd be but, helpful. Uh, but anyway, uh, become a member. Go to TimCast.com. Click join us. Sign up. If you want to get into the VIP voice chat immediately... Then it's 25 bucks a month. We're, and we're setting it up so that after like six months, you can drop back down to 10. We just have to create some kind of gate to keep out bad actors. So there's a lounge and the VIP lounge, and that's either six months as a member or 25 bucks a month. And then we take submissions for questions. So we'll try and do some call-ins tonight. <laughs> Hopefully it works out. So uh, again, smash the like button. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me at Timcast. Um, I think we got suspended on Facebook. So there's more <laughs> bad news for just business revenue or whatever. So... And then we've got uh, other, we're being sued, which uh, we'll, we, maybe we'll get into um, at some point. But uh, uh, Rep Nails, do you want to shout anything out? No, I just, I, again, I appreciate you uh, uh, having me here today. And I think I appreciate you coming. Been a, it's been an absolute great conversation. And I just think it's, you know, uh, we have very trying times right now. All the conversation seems to be about Donald Trump. Uh, and and I'm glad that the uh, that the primary season it's a, it's upon us now. You're you're 12 months away from having this primary, and and I think we just need to coalesce, get behind Donald Trump, uh, uh, Governor DeSantis. If you're listening, just get behind Donald Trump, support him, let Donald save some of his money because the real battle is going to be in November. Let's come together and do what we can to save this country. Period. Right on. Cool. Uh, It's been great, guys. I'm Hannah Claire. I'm a writer for TimCast.com. You can follow me personally on Twitter at HC Brimelo. And you can follow me on Instagram at HannahClaire.B. That's the end of it. Uh, You should definitely 110% follow at TimCast News on Twitter and Instagram. You can see work from me and all of our other journalists. And we're doing some really cool on-the-ground stuff right now with a lot. So check that out. Thanks, guys. I am Phil Labonte. You can follow me on Twitter at PhilThatRemains. And on Instagram, I am at PhilThatRemainsOfficial. 
And I am Surge.com. People ask me where you can find the music. It's at Cool Contest Records. Uh, it's just a single track. Um, appreciate it. Thank you. Good one. Uh, let's have uh, people on the actual Discord chat that are actually going to leave voice chat, like get ready for that, start going to it, do it now, because we'll, we'll be, we will be able to make it work today, Tim. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. And we will see you all over at TimCast.com. Should be on the front page in about seven minutes. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you there.